Good morning. Welcome into Herd Out Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula here on the Pillar Exterior Stage. What's up, DB? Hi. It's 7.01 a.m. I think Joe Kaliga just did something crazy again. Yeah, that was, uh, is this me? Uh, uh yeah, yeah, that's, that's you. I, sometimes I forget how this thing works. Well, the knobs go one way, turns the volume up, it goes the other way, turns the volume down. Ah, uh, working with another comedian. Another comedian. I'm just trying to help you out, man. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. That's what he was saying. I'm always helpful. <laughs> That's what people say about me. <laughs> oh, man. Your boy is on fumes. Yeah, you've had a long couple days. Yeah. Uh, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're good. We're good. It was uh, a good day of games yesterday, though. Yeah. It was, you got a good slate. It was pretty good. Um, saw a lot of really, really good individual performances. Yeah. And uh, just some classy coaches. Like, that's it's part of my favorite thing is just being around other people, kind of seeing how they handle situations. Mm-hmm. You know, coaching is one of those professions where sometimes you're not in as much control as you want to be, but it's a controlling kind of position right? yeah. from the outside looking in. So that balance is always – that balance is always – you, fun to watch yeah you kind of need guys that want to be control freaks but then don't freak out when they lose control right. or when they don't have control right. over certain right. things yeah which is a very sh- like specific type of individual you're looking for a lot of classy coaches too around the state um just checking in on on coach Lamangi. yeah and uh at least igno- you know acknowledging um just the, the brotherhood kind of the brother and yeah uh, of coaching so it's cool, man, and what a way to close it out. Oh, yeah. Um, last night, two of the – obviously two of the better programs. Two of the – I almost hate to say two of the better players because there were so many good yeah. players. A lot of guys making plays last but, night. But uh, just, just a heck of a, a heck of a game. Yeah, and that last uh, – especially the fourth quarter, but the second half in general was – I mean, incredibly exciting, but pretty chaotic too. It was. It was. It was controlled chaos, and um, you know, we've talked to Coach Leonard a bunch. Yeah, and I, but and he's earned like when he says something, you kind of just like, oh yeah, yeah, that's what's going to happen. So his halftime interview kind of let me know, yeah, he's going to be fine. <laughs> and then they were, yeah. And then Scott answered when it would have been easy not to, because the whole. Oh, especially because part of it was – Scott was a little bit self-destructing. Oh, yeah. Like, it wasn't well, well, just Bennington. So although in, the Bennington, se- in the second half. Yes, like the right. Fir- the first half, I think Bennington's inability to finish in the red zone. Oh, yeah. Because well, yeah, I, I think they finished 2 of 5 in the red zone. Right. Because they moved the – Bennington lost a game in which they had 500. They were over they moved 530 the yards. Yeah. They moved the ball at will, basically. I mean, it was in, it was incredible. Yeah. And the thing about it is Scott's resolve. Yeah. For a team that was, you know, if you'd have told me that that game was going to boil down to, like, cultural toughness, mm-hmm. I would have probably said, oh, well, Bennington's used to winning more lately. Yeah. That's going to matter. The guys on the team still have. Just you get enough Van Dykes, yeah, and, and enough Gunthers, <laughs> enough <laughs> Christiansons. It's like Van Dyke was making some crazy throw. Like they, some of them didn't get caught, but he, the one down by the goal line, where he's rolling left, I believe, then throws back across yeah. and and hits the guy right about here, and it's in like triple coverage. Oh, I know. So I understand how it didn't get caught, but live, I thought it got deflected or whatever. Was and that then, the one he threw to Lens thirteen? Yeah. Yeah. And then it gets all the way in. I was like, oh, that ball made it. Larry hit the talk back button. He was like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, it's just. It was wild. You know, we do NEB preps every week. And there's just guys yeah, like that you have. And I've just grown to have an affinity for Van Dyke just because I know him. Yeah. And we've been talking about how good he is all year. Just kind of what he's been through. Yeah. You know, um, his, it's the way that he, he could give two cares. Yeah. Like, they, I mean, they just go out and play. And. Luke, that I, I don't know near as well, mm-hmm. but he, like he may be the most, he may be even that, and then some. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, like, you can tell they're both just hyper competitive. Yeah. And that's a team. And I mean, you, you won't see, I know you were talking about it on the broadcast last night, 
but you won't see better ball skills than you saw last night from a lot of those guys. Yeah. Oh, and it started in the afternoon game. I was floored. Yeah. About about how some of the athleticism and the plays the guys were making on balls in the air. Yeah. Uh, it was it was incredible. The play that Fedorsky from from what like I just there yeah. just were so many good plays. The play that Kaliga made where I think so he gets pass interfered with mm. and then he comes down with it, fights through the pass interference, comes down with it. And he almost came out of the back end. Yes, and he he puts a move on that the guy. That was a heck of a play by Aiden Smith. He was hustling his dude. Brains I thought out. he was gone. You should have seen how far Aiden Smith came from the save that. Well, so they showed it on the replay. You yeah. could see him coming from the back angle, yeah. how far he came to, to catch him to, to run him down. Because as soon as Gliga made the move to get past the second defender, so not his the guy guarding him, but the, the second defender over the top, I was like, oh, no, he's gone. Yeah, and he's fast. And Yeah, because you could see him accelerate, and then Smith came in and swiped the ankle. I was like, oh, man, because that, that was a quarter of an inch from a house call. There, there were so many guys on that field last night that are up for the NEB pro, the Blake Oh, yeah, year. yeah. Whether it's, you know, defensive player of the year, MVP, offensive player. I mean, there's – Special teams, the whole deal. Yeah, he, Think Jansen can play? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are so many dudes on that field that can play. Uh, and I'll admit, I I mostly watch Class A during the year. Yeah. So this weekend's always kind of a treat for me because I know there's good players at other levels. It's just with my schedule where we're at, it's easiest to get out to Class A games, right? And so I like I knew I hadn't seen Scott yet this year, and so I knew they had good players. But like sometimes it looks even better than kind of the the accolades and the numbers yeah, and everything. You know, like, uh, it, you even see this a little bit in class A. Like, Amarion Jackson is a better player than his numbers reflect, I think. 1,000%. Like, that's a guy where I go, man, that's a great player. He's, he's really good. I So, you know, the funny thing is, when we didn't talk much about that game on Monday night, he was really good defensively. Yeah. You know, quietly, he saved a couple plays. Which early, he didn't play last year, did he? Early, no. Right? Like, this no. is new for him. He saved a couple plays early that I felt like. You guys could have got? Yeah. Yeah. You know, every other week. Mm-hmm. You know, we 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 probably make that play, but I yeah, mean, when you don't have a guy of that ability on yeah, the other he, side, he cleaned it up on the back, and his ability to 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 tackle, mm-hmm. which I you know, it's kind of sneaky, right? Yeah, you he, wouldn't assume, but you see it on film though, hundred percent. So it's yeah. like okay, and I've seen Miller South a couple times this year, so I, I I've seen that from him, but you wouldn't guess that's a converted wide receiver, yeah, because you know wide receiver kind of have just, a. Little it's really good. They have a little uh, reputation and maybe not yeah. being the toughest guys on a football field. He, he's 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 fantastic. Yeah, he's really good. Whoever ends up getting him is is going to get a good one. That's a good ball player. So, um, and just just a lot of um, I like Truman Rule from from Central City quite yep. a bit. I, I, I talked about Bedorsky. Uh, there's um, you know Van Slyke. It's a really good player. Really, really um, good players out there. I mean, we talked about we've talked a lot about Kip Brigham oh, from Wahoo. Unbelievable player. His patience. Yeah. It it's I don't know. I'm I'm sure you can appreciate it, but I just like the fact that you probably don't appreciate most it. runners think yeah. I just I need to hit the hole. I just need hit to the hurry hole. up and get there. Yeah. But his patience, and he's not a big guy. Yeah. He, the, his shoulders are always square too, so it's hectic. There's a there's a, an ability uh, across sports, really, whether it's basketball, football. You see it, hockey, I'm sure. You see less of it in baseball just because of the pace of the game. But there's this ability of guys like Kip where they seem to have this innate timing mechanism in their head where they know exactly how long things take. Mm-hmm. And it is – that's a, I know what you're saying. That's, that's a guy that's repped a lot of run game. Yeah. I call it feel. Yeah, yeah, it's like feel, vision, patience. Like people call it different things. You watched Michigan's backs last year. Yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable feel. It was. I mean, I was quorum to the T. Yeah. You know, you watch Saquon Barkley. He's listen. He, he's a, he's super, a free. Yeah. But what but makes him special is is his feel for what they want to do up front. Yeah. He's he's just kind of moving along, and all of a sudden it's, and that's a that's a lot of Brigham. You know, a guy that. This is a, a weird. I mean, pull. winter sports guys or coaches are like waiting for their kids. Yeah, they're to like, come. "Hey, let's go." <laughs> well, it's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> we got to play some. I ball. kind of was doing the laundry list in my head. Yeah, wrestlers and basketball. I'm like, 
These coaches are waiting a while, which I love. I love the I love the guys that do both. Yeah, because you, I I mean I, I don't need to get off on a youth sports specialization thing today, but uh, you know a guy that I think is a good example of this who wasn't super physically gifted of the vision thing is I always kind of put like work done in that category. Yeah, like little guy. Love him. Typic- I, it's weird. I, I love his running stuff. Like typically. You'd see him as like a scat back, third down back, Darren Sproles type guy in the NFL. But he was an every down back for over a decade because his feel was unbelievable. Like, yeah, he was fast, but who yeah. like who cares? Everybody's fast in the NFL. That those are the guys that I really like. I think are the most fun to watch, whether it's football or basketball or whatever else, because like you can just tell they're better at the game than than everybody else yeah. is. And it's uh, it's you saw that. I mean, Goots was overshadowed. He went for a buck thirty. Yeah, just casually. I wouldn't have known that if I, I wouldn't have known that number. And it was gaudy. It was like nineteen for one thirty-one. Yeah, you got the. You, that's a huge yards per carry, <laughs> like just <laughs> chunking, like, chunking people. And how good is Lawrence? And where they didn't really start playing running back until you get quarterfinals. Yeah, it's like oh, must be nice just to be able to go just to that. toss a guy in there and hey, good to go. He's, <laughs> You know, I've I've obviously grown just to be a fan because of wrestling. Yeah, right. He's wrestling in a program with some guys that that I know really well, and you know, he and his brother. But uh, just some of the the individual stuff that was going on last night is one of is, one of my basketball coaching friends just texted me. He goes, "Yes, yes, we are waiting on the football players." <laughs> Well, I know the wrestling coach has got to be scratching their head, too. It's like, any day now, guys. Let's go. Yeah. Like, congrats on the good season, but we got practice. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah, but a, a heck of a heck of a game last night. I felt, you know, this is where, where my heart, like, for, 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 for players. Mm-hmm. I felt like Houston Hill deserved better mm. for for the outcome because, I, yeah, I, I do. I think he's. I like what he does for that offense, and man, Scott just made some plays. Yeah, <laughs> they really did. Sometimes he just—it's. I would. I'd have liked to see a little healthier new birth for, for Bennington. Yeah. For whatever the reason, I'm just kind. Of, I'm just a fan. I just like the way he plays. Is yeah. and he's a really, really good safety blanket. And conversely, you saw what Luke did for Dylan. Yep. The other way with that intermediate passing game. Hundred percent. Right, it just kind of it just kind of settled him down. Yeah, and then they just played catch, kind of matriculating down the field. But when you've got those sort of easy check, like not sort of check down, but just like this, hey, like security blanket. I know this guy's going to be there. I, I, did, you- I did figure out last night. Somebody t- tweeted that Luke is older. Luke doesn't seem like he'd like me near as much. As, <laughs> as t- t- he kind of gives me the little, like, mean, little mean spirited. I'm like, I don't think that guy would like me. I don't know, but um, he was he just flipped over all of a sudden. Yeah, now you know you'd seen it on film, but it's like, okay, well, is this gonna happen tonight? And then all of a sudden right. that drive, it was just like, I'm gonna play catch with my brother. Yeah, I you know I joke with LP that they want to have a good Thanksgiving. And <laughs> I do think Luke's probably the tougher one. Yeah, I um, mean. I, I, Listen, although uh, Dylan was Dylan was big, that dive into the end zone on the two point conversion, he got. I wonder how so he he was got hammered, getting rocked. Yeah, not just on that play, but like on, on a how throw. About the first one out of bounds that they didn't call. Yeah, he got smoked. Yeah, and it was like, okay, this may be how it was going to go, and then, you know, Bennington with that pressure. And uh, the one that I think hurt him the most was probably the most innocuous when he got drugged down from behind. Oh yeah. Yeah. He kind of rolled on his shoulder. Yeah. And and he was a little slow. Yeah. I'm like, well, there were there were some other ones that looked a little more violent. That one he just fell, Yeah, he just, right? he just land wrong, right? Yeah. But, I, you know. He did do his best John Elway helicopter impression into the end zone on that one. So, the, you know, some folks were really upset about some of those calls. I just couldn't. I couldn't tell. Honestly, I, I couldn't tell. You know, and from. If I had to guess, it probably was short. But. There wasn't a good enough angle with the. And Larry did a good job. He's like, you know, because I was like, oh, I think he's short. And he's like, well, we got it. That's kind of a bad angle. Yeah. You could, t- I mean, I could tell on TV that wasn't a great angle to be um, able to tell that. I wanted a pylon. And, I, and I'm pretty sure, um, you know, you just have to break the plane. 
And that's why I asked real time who recovered, right? Yeah. Was there, there was a clear recovery by Scott. So I'm like, oh, I'm not sure that it mattered. It was going to matter. But I, I do, I did hear, this wasn't confirmed to me, but coaches on the sideline, because I know that horse collar is going to be a yeah. huge, is a huge issue. I don't know if this, I have so many official friends. I don't know why somebody d- just doesn't tell me, but apparently on a horse a, a horse collar call, he the runner has to fall on his back. Oh, I don't. That's not that way in the other like levels. I, I need clarity. I know that if you bring a down in NFL and college, if you bring a guy down by the horse collar, that is the rule, right? So it doesn't matter if he lands. So on his maybe feet. if maybe if Lordson falls different, maybe. I I mean I was scrambling. There was one in your guys' game against Braylon that I thought might get called. Yeah, late when uh when. I think it was 20 to 10 and Millard South was starting to get pressure like pretty much every down on Braylon. You know, with 10 minutes to go in that game, they had minus six rushing yards. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, I mean, it's exa- like we said, it's exactly the thing you talked about. You can do the right thing the entire game. And there's so many playmakers over there that it just might not matter. Yeah. You're just hoping it wouldn't come to fruition. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Does, I mean, being right as DB is not always the, the best thing in the world, right? You'd like to miss one every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we had to roll the dice in some spots too, right? We weren't yeah. going to double loft and Yeah, which ended up working out. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah. Um, although, you know, he had the big catch. He did. Against us on third down. It was right in front of me too. He caught the back end of that ball. Really? And he hit the ground, and he kind of grimaced. Like, I could see this real time. Yeah. It was like HD. Because he's like, from you to from me to you away and from And I was you. like, oh, it'd be cool if you didn't hang on to that. That's <laughs> really what I'm thinking. Because <laughs> I didn't want him to be hurt. Yeah. Right? And I was like. like I, I'd love it if the grimace was just because like, you dropped like, it. I was like, cool, let that go while you're just holding the pose <laughs> for the official to see. You, you squeezed it. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> You know, but it, it just, uh, I i like watching kids function at a high level. Yeah, and we even, had a lot. Even if it's at. At your own expense? Yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of that over the last couple of days. Yeah, and, and the world was introduced to to Mr. Hill. Yeah. Tough. That's a, I mean, that's a tough pill to swallow when you got a guy that's probably third or fourth on the. Yeah. On the weapons list, and uh, you're like, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and sit at one point looking for a different home, too. So that's uh, good to sit on that one. <laughs> He's fantastic. No, just very, just uh, this very sudden. Yeah, he uh, he had a great game. And, and honestly, that, you know, that that's kind of where the dam broke, right? Yeah. How good would you like to be? Like, let's say if you're Lordson. Yeah. Where you could you could be a four time state wrestling champ and it may be an afterthought. Yeah, that'd be nice. Everybody will remember his performance from last night. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> this is unbelievable. There are sometimes I just had to just shake, make, shake your head. Just use my cough button. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> just silly. Incredible. Yeah. And when you see it develop, the, his touchdown run that he cut back looked like it was in just, oh, it's just, just nice. really it's casual. Little, yeah. yeah. Just a no, stroll in the park. Just his vision. Yeah. That thing got walled down. He was really, really patient. And then when he saw the crease, there was just like this subtle acceleration. Yeah. You know, and he's he's playing against some good guys. Because um, I, I liked I liked Scott's secondary. I'm a big Lieben trick guy. Yeah. I don't. He may be one of those pups that doesn't quite know how good he could be. Mm, yeah, and, yeah. But maybe he does. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Pretty cerebral family. But I, I watched him warm up, and I kind of watched some of the little things. He he could be really good. Remember that, you know, Kalik, a lot of these guys get a lot. Liebentritt's one of those younger guys that I think keep an eye on. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. Player. One of the one of the only other guys I've seen kind of do that this year where he just kind of makes like a casual move and has, like, I saw uh, Vermas do it against Millard West earlier this year. Where I think another he, one of those sudden guys. Yeah, super sudden. But so when he makes just like a little move, it almost looked like he was like downshifting in terms of he was slowing down like into his descent, and just was it was so dramatic the way it had an impact on the defense and real time. It's like it's kind of like Barkley's second seventy some yards, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like where you're like I I don't totally understand what I just watched. I th- I think he's moving fast. Yes. 
Because he's move, you think he's moving fast because of how quickly he's running away from people. Yeah. But the if you're just watching him, you're like, is he jogging? Yeah. What's happening here? This is just a lot of guys like that's one of the reasons that I like, and it's weird to say I like because I mean gonna have to play against. It's one of the reasons why I like KJ over at Iowa. Oh yeah, just yeah. very just efficient. And I mean, uh, guys making moves going forward. You yeah. know what I mean. You can those, like those guys are hard. You can like a guy even if you're gonna play him. I mean, you know, can you? I think so. You no. can have a level of respect for somebody. No, I do. I it's do. just uh, you still go beat, try and beat their head in when it's game time. But right and up they, until they, that, they, they will have their work cut out. Yeah, is they're gonna. Still, have, is it still? Is it still? What's let's, let's see. We're still at and five and a half. half. La- last time I saw, we we're at five and a half. Which, we got we got to talk concern and danger meter for you because. You're kind of a pessimist by nature with this particular Still team. Still five and a half. Is it? How are we feeling about Creighton? Oh, not great. Yeah, I can't wait for this next segment. Not great at all. I've I've got some concerns, and we, we'll get to it in, in the next segment here. Obviously, they lost yesterday to, to San Diego State. but So our, our statistician? Yeah. Our spin spotter? It's Creighton guy. So we literally were – watching <laughs> not asking i'm dead dog serious i actually had volume <laughs> and we got ready to shoot the open for the next game and in typical lp fashion larry goes hey you know it'd be a really good idea i go what's that lp he goes if you turn the basketball game down on your computer <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, <laughs> all right just nice and casual. My bad. Hey, if you, it's just, I mean, if you could turn that down for me. Appreciate dude, it. Dude, it's hilarious. Uh, coming up on the show today, we've got our Wednesday regular Brian Christopherson, Husker 24-7. I didn't see BC yesterday. I thought I might. We uh, bumped B. Edwards up a day since we won't be here tomorrow on Thanksgiving. Get some of his winners for the weekend at 845. Then 945, we'll talk to your friend, our friend Jessica Cootie. Husker Sports Network. We'll see what Jessica's got going on heading into the weekend. Hopefully, she'll be able to get you to Iowa City safe and sound. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We're leaving a little later, so I should be okay. You've got a lot of familiarity driving over there, so you should be all right. Relax. You should be able to figure it out okay. Wow. <laughs> Maybe not quite as much as Madison, but oh, quite a man. bit. <laughs> I thought I shook this yesterday. That's, great. That's DB. I'm Robbie Lula. We'll talk about how bad Creighton is coming up next. We're back here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. That's DB. I'm Robbie Lula here at Herd at Sports Bar and Grill. Mm. DB, what do you want now? I just thought we might talk, have a little conversation. Can we talk? My voice is shot. Yeah, you've been <clears throat> you've been a lot going on the last couple of days. A lot yeah. of talking? I mean, you yeah, know? sure. I... Uh... I'm, I, I, so you know how you never know like when your body's gonna crash mm. like i'm sure it's coming yeah on you know, saturday and sunday you know, sunday we um i don't think we left the school until five yeah you know and then you recalibrate <laughs> you recalibrate like your emotions and you yeah. gotta ramp it up i told my buddy i told brett yesterday in central city i'm like i was like hey, how are you gonna pull this off and like, Go love on other people's kids. <laughs> like that's gonna be my best medicine. Yeah. Is to, is to go do a broadcast. So when people are getting off the elevator and like, oh my gosh, and and I get it. I love the concern and compassion, and um, a lot of people asking about Coach Samanji, and just for that time being, like for those three games, mm-hmm. that's a pretty good little get away well little, little medicine for you yeah because you just you just understand the magnitude it's a heck of a place to be and you know coach Terman said it best you know there's some rumblings that you know you may not continue to hold state championships there and stuff but the kids love it yeah I, I that would be he's getting better with age he's loosened Terman. up like yeah yeah he's loosened up he's and he's because he's always been funny yeah but he seems a little bit he's less like, high strung yeah he is like he's a little less tightly wound maybe <laughs> yeah i don't know him well but you know i, I kind of have these these little mini interactions with him yeah. sort of maybe a couple times a I, year I, lo- I love him whether it's at paisons whether it's talking him on the radio or whatever you can kind of just tell over the last few years he seems to be a little looser and he's one of those guys uh, he's like the we're, i'm just going to relate to these guys as cheese mm-hmm. the cheese on the bath sandwich yeah He's not always like what you would think, like if you watch us interact, like overly kind. Yeah. 
but he means well. He gives, and, I, and I like him. He gives off the vibe of a good dude, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I just, I kind of, I like guys like that. Because there's guys that you, the, the bad, the stinky cheese guys are the guys that don't give off a good vibe. That's why I call them stinky cheese. Because, like, your first whiff, you're like, yeah. And then you see the cheese, you're like, oh, maybe it's okay. Like, one of my guys, like, he made my night. For, like, there's so many texts I had to catch up on on Monday night. Mm-hmm. But, like, you just never know. Like, like. Matt Hosk sent me a text, mm-hmm. and it like it changed. Of and I had a ton. There mm-hmm. were a lot, but like they're just some that hit you differently. Yeah, because you don't always hear from them, and it, you when you read the message, sometimes it's not how you think they talk. Yeah, and he he sent me a message, and I was like, I think I'm gonna go to bed now. Just kind of gave you a little peace. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, it's not like you just sit here and can, can pro- program emotions, right? Right. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this. But it just, it just hit different. Yeah. I was like, oh, great. Thank you. So if you're, I, I know you're a public school guy, but if you're a, if you're a Creighton fan trying to program. I'm a, your, I'm a, I'm a, I know. you I'm like a, coach back. I, I love, I know. So, I'm just giving you a hard time. So one of the things that I told you I was curious about mm-hmm. is going to be, is going to play out. What's that? I want to see him navigate the uncertainty of chemistry. Yeah. Because he's a culture guy. Yeah. And you've got a lot of moving pieces. And you have a lot of moving pieces that are very similar. And I said in the preseason, I want to watch him go to work because, I mean, Lord knows he's talked me off the ledge before. Like, I just want to know. I want to watch him work. And if, he's gonna, they're going to have to work. If he pulls this off where this becomes the type of team that, you know, a top 15 team, that's what they were preseason ranked. Yeah. If he pulls that off this year, this might be his best coaching mm-hmm. job ever. Because although are you how soon before you think, you know, the blueprint of this of the Big East Conference? Because I don't know. Fa- it's don't very know. head scratchy. Right I don't now. know yet. I really don't. Because okay. you've got I mean, UConn's dropped two in a row. And I'm, hasn't looked good doing it. No, I mean, I'm just, I mean, last night took a last minute, but yeah, but I mean, how good's Colorado? <sighs> I don't know. I don't either, right? But I, that, I know, I know they're well coached. At at this point, I look at that and I'm go, it's uh, probably not a team I'm super scared of, in general, right? Colorado doesn't strike me as a team that I, I'm too worried about in the national landscape. Obviously, UConn drops the the game to Memphis, then they come back and drop the game, which. I get how things can get away from you in Maui because you're playing boom, boom, boom like that. And it's a it's a weird atmosphere with the gym and everything. So I get it. But if I'm UConn, I, I don't look like I'm unbeatable. Um, obviously, you know, you've got the St. John's and Seton Halls of the world that you just kind of scratch your head at sometimes. Even Rutgers with a couple of high – or Rutgers isn't even – I don't know why I even brought up Rutgers. Uh, Seton Hall. Because Bailey should – it, Bailey's a top three pick. That's yeah. Why. Well, well, and he's got his part. Like that class, I wonder how Pico pulled that off. I knew that was the scuttlebutt this summer. Yeah. But to watch it actually play yeah, out. Yeah, Harper and, and Bailey. Oh, yeah, yeah. You look at those guys, you're like, those are lottery picks. It, two of the top ten players in high school. And you go, okay, why are you at Rutgers? And But but that's kind of – like the Big Ten's the same way as the Big East in, in that sense. Where you go, I don't know who I think is good yet. And maybe nobody's that good, mm-hmm. but th- and that'll matter for Creighton, right? That'll matter in, in how Creighton ends up. But I, I don't think this roster currently makes a ton of sense. Yeah, it's a, a sort of whether it's chemistry and even basketball wise doesn't make a ton of sense to me. And maybe it will at some point. Like maybe guys find roles uh, if Fedor gets eligible. That would make that would be a big deal as well. Um, in terms of guys sliding into spots that make more sense, but uh, I was I was at the Nebraska game with a, a buddy of mine and his dad, and his dad goes, "It, it doesn't seem like Mac has figured out this team yet." In terms it's early, of, like he's still feeling for it, yeah. right? And he told us that, yeah, in his last press or two. And it wasn't as like it before wasn't, yesterday. It wasn't a, uh, a a negative or pejorative. It was just like, hey, it looks like he's still trying to find it with what makes sense for this team. I, 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 I meant to. Google pejorative last time you used that. Just want to give just me Just means to like uh, with a negative connotation. Okay. Yeah. Or uh, like an almost, I wouldn't quite say insult, but kind of almost like a backhanded. Okay. You know? Yeah. You know, when you say so, uh, but yeah, so like I, I don't even, I don't even think he meant it as 
uh, an indictment on on Mac that he hadn't figured it out yet. It was just a hey, yeah, this team might take a little longer to gel. Then I mean, you know, maybe it's a little bit like the team a couple years ago. Best case scenario where they you know are six and six through non-con playing the first couple games of the Big East, and then obviously they sort of found their stride and figured out who they were. But that was sort of similar with a lot of new pieces, a lot of guys in different spots. Now, I don't know that there's a Baylor Shireman on this roster mm-hmm. in terms of ability or makeup or anything like that. But if there is, you know, you do have a, a couple young guys in Jackson McAndrew and Ty Davis that I, there's stuff I really like about them. How long will it take you? Because we kind I think we kind of differed, okay. at, at least in our group text. And I think I should. Pro- All right. I'll just I'll listen to you. Your response. How how patient do you want me to be or should we be before we have these generalizations on Neil? Mm. Um, I think I was a little tougher than you guys in the chat because I felt like I had my mind made up, but I'm willing to see it out. So here's where I'm at with Neil. My expectations of him from what I watched at Arizona State were so low. That honestly, oh really? Yeah, I was not. I did not like his Arizona State. That's at hard all. though. I, I like. I was riding with Padilla on that one though. Where did I say Dilla? Yeah, Dia. Dilla. Oh, it's Dilla. I know. I saw him yesterday. What's the What's the Dilla Dilla? So I'm just real quick. Yeah, Shot, Sauter kind of shot me the side eye. I think I was a little nicer to Jacob greeting him than I was Sauter, mm. but it wasn't personal. Yeah. I see Sauter all the time. Yeah, you know, I see Jacob. So when I saw Jake, and Jacob was nice. He was like, he yeah. came over, he's like, hey. He's like, hey, DB. I was like, oh, hey, JP. And I, and Sauter looked at me like, <laughs> man, you know. JP's very likable. I he's, love JP. Sauter was probably expecting a happy birthday. I know, I know. And he, Sauter threw me off because he said something really, really, really nice in the morning. And I was like. <laughs> You just don't trust it for the rest of the day? Well, it had depth. <laughs> yeah. And I was like shook. I was like, okay, I'm going to go now. Like, I didn't even know how to respond. <laughs> but anyway, so with Neil, I somebody, somebody's, mm-hmm. and, and who knows, were you surprised that Ashworth went through warm-ups? Yeah. I mean, they're saying. He, so some of those guys have those ankles. Yeah, where they bounce back. And I fast. always was envious. Y'all, I'm super jealous. Booker was like that. Really? Michael Booker. Yes. Terrible knees. They're like rubber. Those malleable ankles. Bounce right back. It's like, how does that thing looks like a hard boiled egg under there? How yeah. are you playing? I mean, I was hearing Ashworth might play on Saturday. Like this upcoming Saturday. Yeah. I thought I, he was going to be out for a month. I'm I'm shocked. We got to get into that. We've got plenty more time to come up with all of that here on Herd Out Sports Radio. Wrapping up hour number one here on Herd Out Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula here at Herd Out Sports Bar and Grill. It is time to get to a friend on the Herd Out Hotline. We got Jaden. Oh, maybe he's a friend. We don't know yet. Friend or foe? Jaden, what's going on, bud? I like the name. Good morning, gentlemen. Jaden, what's up? How we doing? Hey, pretty good, guys. Uh, first off, just want to say congrats to DB on a great season. Thanks, buddy. Um, and it's pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool that you, uh, you know, turn around the next day and uh, go back and announce games. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that because. Well, it was, it got a little loose there in the booth yesterday. I will I, say. Well, I I know, <laughs> and and here's the deal, man. I I hope people are okay with that because it takes two to tango, but I I I. I own me but larry and i get along so well and he's funny right so sometimes like he knows how to put the quarter in like he's i, I get a lp i, I mean you i've worked with great. i i worked with him for 20 years you I, know it's like he's super yeah I, and he he is a no. breath of fresh air like i, I i'm a, i'm a big putney guy yeah no i really enjoyed that uh, it was it was awesome to to listen to that some good games yesterday too but i did have one quick question on iowa okay um er- oh we might have lost him no 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 he just, just is in a bad spot there it is hey start that question again Jaden. you uh you cut out for a sec oh oh hey uh 
uh, my question is mainly on the secondary. Um, I know you've talked about, you know, maybe them not wanting to mix the old, you know, the younger guys with the older guys or, or things of that nature. But I mean, is it just uh, that the younger guys aren't ready yet or are they, are they just seeing something in practice that makes them not want to play them yet? I was just wondering um, because, I don't know, I'd, just when you see the same mistakes week after week, you you kind of just want to see, you know, another guy get a chance. So I yeah. uh, just wanted to hear your thoughts on that, and uh, congrats on a good season. And, Ravi, maybe next time I'll have something nice to say about you. <laughs> <laughs> I won't hold my breath, but I appreciate it. Thanks for, um, I, so thanks for calling, Jane. The whole – the, the, the secondary thing, mm-hmm. um, it's just one of those questions. I don't have a great answer for. Sure. Because I don't know when I, – I, I'm not – well, I know, but I'm too I'm probably too close to it, right? Sure. So I would say with that, number one as it relates to Iowa, I think Nebraska will play it vastly different mm. with their secondary. I'm going to say this again. With regards to Iowa, I think Nebraska will play – the back end vastly different than we've seen the first – how many games have they played? 11. 11. First 11 games. Um, Schematically or personnel? Personnel. Okay. Personnel. So, I'm, and I'm not necessarily you – know, I just I think it'll look different. Sure. Just, just look who's on the field. And we started to see that at the end of Wisconsin. Kind of count the bodies that are on yeah. the field. And 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 draw your own conclusions. Um, you know, we saw some Bly Hill against Wisconsin, and I don't know what I don't know what the personnel is going to look like, but they did start to do that against Wisconsin. So, and and this is a team where schematically Nebraska is going to have to play it different. Mm-hmm. You, you just can't play with a three down front and say, "Hey, go stop the run." Yeah. So this is a this is a good spot. Maybe where, a little more like Rutgers. Um, I mean. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um, so I think if you're Nebraska, to, as, as it relates to, to Jaden's question, this is where you make a little bit of money schematically, mm. right? Because this is about game plan and installation. You can't, you can't play it the same way that you have and expect you to do things differently. So your yeah. install, which is a couple of days short, uh-huh. has to be on point. Um, with regards to playing young and new, it's not that they don't trust. I don't, I don't, no. It's not that they don't trust. It's just that you have to be willing to, if you're still winning mm-hmm. and you're achieving goals, how quickly do you pull the plug on the transition? Yeah. I have. A, it's a weird analogy, but it's like, it's like stitching up the same sweatshirt or shirt mm-hmm. to get by before you go buy a new one. Sure. People do it with cars all the time, right? Like, how, how, how much do I keep putting money into this car before I just say, hey, let's go buy a new one instead of fixing the engine or transmission? That's kind car. of the best analogy I can give. It's not yeah. so much like the cross-contamination thing because that has negative connotation. It's like, ooh, you just clean that chicken. Don't put the, yeah. you know, on Dewey that glow or whatever right although i do think there's a difference between not wanting cross-contamination and wanting to preserve the chemistry of a group yeah like the younger group if they're building really good chemistry together they might look better as a unit than they do individually spliced in and i do like the movement of the the locker room yeah you know i shouldn't have said what i said about the wanting the locker room back but i i do like i do like that movement yeah but as you can see from some of the things that coach holgerson says Mm -hmm. and He's freed other coaches up to be like that, too. Yeah. If, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Which is important. You, you know, like, sometimes I think you want to look at Coach Hogerson and say, yeah, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> like, he doesn't care who plays. You know. Uh, you know. Right? I mean, that was like the that was like the line of the, the press conference week, right? 100%. I don't, I don't care who you are. And I, I think there's a – Shots fired. I think it's hard sometimes with younger coaches who don't have sort of the equity – because let's be honest, Dana Horkson doesn't need this job. No. Right? A lot of these other guys. Now, now be careful now because I don't want to give the impression. This may be my pride, so you can check me. Sure. Let's not act like he's doing us a favor. No. Because 
I mean in where he's at in his career. Okay. Right? It's not like he's okay. playing charity to Nebraska. He wants to be here, obviously. Yeah. And I think he sees a value in being here. But in terms of what his career is, he's still got a, a few million dollars to cash from Houston before he really even has to think about anything. Yeah, it's else. not a it's not a it's not a money it's thing. It's a satiate it's a it's a it's a being satisfied. Thing. It's a he likes coaching ball. Yeah. Right? But it's also not a career. I love when people say that. You sound so old. <laughs> I just want to coach ball. Good ball player. I'm a ball coach. Good ball player. Um, I don't know. I just started doing that in the last few months. I don't know why. Uh, but it's also not a career advancement thing in the sense that, like, some of these guys on staff, when you're a young coach, you're getting your career going, mm-hmm. right? That's not where Dana Holgerson's at. Like, he'll probably have offers in the offseason, and he probably would have had offers in the offseason regardless of if he came back to Nebraska or not. Now, if over the course of three or four games that he's here, he lights the world on fire, like, yeah, maybe the offers are a little better. But this isn't, you know, like Garrett McGuire's it, trying to advance his coaching career at some point, right? Um, even like a, like a uh, Dvorak, right, is trying to advance his coaching career to a certain point. Whereas Dana Holgerson's like, yeah, I've, I've been a head coach for 13 years. I kind of don't have to worry about that right now. Mm. At the very least... Everybody's going to hire me as an offensive coordinator for as long as I want to work. Whether I decide to be a head coach or not or want to be a head coach or not, that's a different story. But Dana Holgerson is never going to have a hard time finding work. And that's the difference between, I think, where he's at and able to say certain things versus where a lot of the rest of Nebraska staff's at. Because they just don't have that comfortability career-wise. I never say that word right. Comfortability. I don't, is it comfortability or comfortability? I don't even know if it's a real word, if I'm being honest. You always say that, and it turns out to be a word. So I'm not going to slap your wrist publicly. <laughs> but it's a. I think it's a very different situation because of where they're at in their careers. I think you're playing possum, too, by the way, when you do that. Oh, you know, that's word. Well, you, you kind of have me second guessing sometimes because I'll say things well, that I think are words, and what, then what did you say the other? What did you say a couple weeks ago? And and my man B two was like, did he just? Did you say worser? Yeah, I did. I said worser. <laughs> Te- technically a word. <laughs> technically, I don't feel good about that one. I'm gonna be honest. I remember. I'd like to get that one back. Severe used to want to ring my neck when I would say, um, uh, irregardless. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's not a word. It is too. No, you just no, it's not. God, I'll stab you. Irregardless and regardless mean the same thing. Why would both words exist? It's something about written versus oral. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oral language is different. But anyway, uh, um, so back to so back to kind of what you're saying about like the old guys and the young guys as it relates to to Jaden's question is because so. He, there's this there's this thing where you want these bowl practices. You Nebraska's telling you everything you want to know if you just listen to them, mm-hmm. right? Because they're talking about, hey, these extra practices and these these schools get this and we've been missing out on that. So you know that that's being talked about behind closed doors. Hey, we're a developmental program. We've been short on practices. We want to get this. Let's just get to a bowl game, get that monkey off our back and move on. Mm-hmm. So I think without sacrificing the season, the premise was let's just get to a bowl game. So as long as Nebraska's in the hunt, mm-hmm. they're not going to typically hit panic right? because – they still have some goals in hand. So after Indiana, I was like, well, you know, they got some tough decisions to make. It's, it's how close are we without having to make wholesale changes mm. so we can still achieve the desired outcome. The desired outcome was to get the extra bowl practices and make a bowl game. And make a bowl yeah. game. So they were just good enough to be doing that. So you didn't want to make wholesale changes mm. now. Off, offense is an different than defense because offense was so bad a year ago. Mm-hmm. Anything you did would be better than what it was because you have better personnel now, mm-hmm. right? So there's that temperament. Yeah. Defensively, on the other hand, you were so good in some areas, you're like, well, how much do we want to change this? Like, let's not forget. Yeah. Especially if you put it against statistics, too. Like, we're not near as bad as people think we are. Right. We're just not as good as we were a year ago. Or as people think we should be. So, yeah. now that you're becoming your own benchmark, there's, how much do you want to panic? Yeah. Well, and I think there's As also, it relates to Jaden's question. You yeah, know what I mean? Because it's a legit, it, Yeah, it's a good. It's, I mean, I like that conversation because it's one that needs to be had. But I think that's where they would gravitate towards. Yeah, is hey, our level of success was still high enough. Even in some of the games you lose, the level of success is still high enough. You felt like you gave yourself a chance. Yeah. 
And, right. and, and schematically, they will play Iowa much different than they have played anything in the and past. And you just don't know if you make wholesale changes, if you're still giving yourself a chance or right. not, until you see it. At what cost? Yeah. At what cost do you make those changes? We'll maybe ask Brian Christopherson that coming up next. Kicking off hour number two here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and we are efforting our friend Brian Christopherson from Husker 24-7. Uh, as we get BC, uh, wanna wanna make sure that we Shane, do we have him? Yeah. Oh, okay, there we go then. Never mind. We're gonna get right to BC right now. Our guy Brian Christopherson, Husker twenty four seven. What's going on, man? How you guys doing? Hi, BC. How are we? How are how are you? Uh, we we's proper for me sometimes. I have multiple personalities. <laughs> around but uh <laughs> so do i it's okay i'm doing well we got up we got up early uh you know last time i was coming to omaha and i talked on the radio i said an unfortunate comment kind of misspoke <laughs> so i told my wife i had to get her here and i said let's leave early so i can be parked and let's not go through that again so i'm all parked down in downtown omaha right now uh, are you <clears throat> is are one of the two of you at an office or there's a work related deal it's it's thir- it's wednesday don't they know that you have to get ready for vacation i mean iowa city yeah, man the, the sunny balmy destination yeah, they should be aware of uh, of of that. But uh, she works at Union Pacific in downtown Omaha, so mm. uh, and she's got a she's got to play out the string up until Thanksgiving. No no days off there, so uh, she's she's grinding. And uh, here I am in de- lovely downtown Omaha. I didn't realize uh, Bill Belichick was running Union Pacific these days. No days off, huh? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you got to keep those. Got to keep the the uh, the railroads going. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, it's a short week, so we kind of condense. You're putting a lot, a uh, few more, um, same amount of stories, less time to do it, but, uh, that's all right. DC, we, we just got an interesting question from, uh, our caller Jaden about the secondary and he was kind of wondering about, I guess, why there hadn't been more rotation on the back end yet, whether it was the mm-hmm. coaches didn't think the younger guys were ready or they wanted to kind of keep them together as a unit. Like when you look at it, obviously there's been some issues in the secondary. What's your assessment of why you haven't seen the rotations there that you've seen at a lot of other position groups? Uh, was the caller or emailer actually Mike Schaefer? Uh, <laughs> going under a different name. It didn't sound like him. Uh, it didn't sound like him. Okay. Okay, because my, my coworker Schaefer and I have uh, kind of gone round and round about this a little bit. He's on that side of it. I'm a, I'm always more of that guy who's like, I don't know, you can't you can't just make uh, you know that. I, I don't want to say knee jerk. That's not what it is, but that move, you know, just to make a move and assume that it's going to be better. I always worry on the back end with all the communication that's involved. Even though we have seen some missteps here and there that it's very difficult at this point for someone to just sort of step right into the fire um, in these types of games. That doesn't mean it can't be done, but you don't know if you're going to get the same payout or more. Um, And so it it would be, it would be a pretty big gamble um, with players who uh, are going to be really good. Don't get me wrong. And I'm excited about what the bull practices are going to do for those guys. And I think if you go into the bowl game, maybe you do do more stuff like that. Uh, but for this particular weekend and uh, the previous one, I, I was the kind of hold the line guy, trust your veterans to play at a higher level and kind of get that communication stuff in order that was maybe missing on occasion against USC and maybe a couple times against Wisconsin, if we're honest. Hey, BC, for all the – the the ups and flows and ups and downs of the, this year on special teams is there a world in which you're thinking in Iowa City man if Nebraska wins special teams fill in the blank and it's it's a it's a realistic thing yeah that's a great way to put it because uh if you had said that back around Purdue game um people would have you know mocked you um more than normal i w- yeah, in the, yeah. Uh, but I was actually going to ask it, but uh, Rule ended up answering it sort of just on his own about Ed Foley and sort of staying with the process. Um, I thought a question was maybe warranted about um, 
how Foley has handled it because uh, he's certainly a guy who took a lot of criticism in late September. Um, I'm not saying there weren't some things that were out of order uh, with the block kicks and stuff like that, but but some of it was basically like you have these two or three positions uh, within your special teams that if they're not on, everything sort of looks bad, right? Everybody kind of takes that criticism along with like a kicker that's struggling or in in that rare case when it pops up when you're not even snapping the ball well, that falls on like 20, 25 other guys it seems like kind of take the brunt of the criticism. So I think I give them credit for um, not panicking about it and not thinking that everything was on fire just because these two or three spots needed repairs. Now, there'd still be big problems if suddenly John Hole hadn't come on the way he has. Like, we'd, we'd be talking about it much the same way. That's just the interesting part of special teams. There's just so much that's reliant, like in this big co- picture conversation about a group on a guy's right foot and if it's like hitting the ball right you know it changes everything and it's uh it, it changes the confidence as i think the offense proceeds when they know they have a kicker to back them up like that so um i think that's one of the great stories of this season is john hole um and just the rule said it after the game you could tell it's kind of an emotional thing like there was practices this year where he didn't make a kick, as the head coach said. Mm-hmm. And you had guys who were still supporting him. You had your – Ja'Cory Barney was one of those guys who was, like, always with him and trying to get him going. And MJ Sherman, I think, was another guy who called him Johnny and was trying to fire him up. And uh, they, 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 stuck, they stuck with that dude and uh, showed confidence in him when they were seeing him, uh, you know, it slice it off, uh, you know, into the woods like I'd be doing off the tee. So I, I think that's a, probably one of the best stories of this season as far as just a turnaround and, and the guy showing some real mental strength. BC, do you, in a weird way, do you think the fact that Rural was willing to make a move in season in a dramatic one with the offensive coordinator position actually made his decision to stick with Ed Foley feel more uh, – I guess kind of impactful, right? Because it wasn't a, hey, I'm just not going to do this in-season thing anymore. It was a, hey, I'll do what's necessary. I don't think this is necessary. Yeah. You said it as well as I could spend a bunch of words on. I think that's exactly right. Like, it, um, he, he showed that he has that in his, you know, that he w- is going to willing to do that at a, bi- a big-time move, um, one of the biggest spots on his coaching staff. And so – if there's other spots where he's like, let's just see how this plays out. I've coached with these guys a long time. I mean, he's, he's coached with Ed Foley for, you know, a decade or more. And then he, he, he knows what he's about and like how he uh, prepares guys and um, has obviously believed in him before. So it would strike me as strange if a coach like Matt rule suddenly like a month into something when it's sort of going awry would be like, ah, let's just abandon this, this, you know, or let's go a complete different direction when he's in his mind seen uh, a lot of years of work to the contrary that makes him believe in a coach. Um, I remember him last year saying a quote about, it's interesting, sometimes uh, a coach who's taking the most, most criticism on the outside I think might be doing a good job because I know all the layers and all the stuff that he's working with, and there might be another guy who's getting uh, propped up a lot by everybody and not that he's not doing a, a good job, but you know, maybe he's got a better setup for himself within his room and all that. And so I always try to keep that in mind that we don't know everything. And, um, you know, I, I that certainly with all that's on the line and winning now, uh, we've heard rules say, I'll do what it takes. Uh, so if he thinks, uh, what it takes is staying put at some spots, um, you gotta, you gotta respect that uh, he's at least processing all, all avenues. Yeah. So, BC, <clears throat> let me ask you something about kind of this, the, like the coaching perspective, and and Coach Holgerson, and, and this is on the heels of seeing um, Dylan with the guys and, and being around Lincoln the last couple of days, kind of having fun, and you saw the tie-dyed purple Adidas outfit last night, kind of living his best life, and how much of is it is it understated? Do you think that Coach Holgerson and kind of this new infusion of of practice regimen 
has kind of helped Dylan get past that that freshman wall, right? That we sometimes see guys hit emotionally and and physically. He seems to be, I don't know this for a fact, but on the outside, he seems to be like kind of recharged or or he seems fresh again with his personality starting to yeah. beam a little bit. Do you think we we probably haven't talked no, enough about that, huh? Yeah, I think you're right, Damon. I think he he does seem that way. Um, he, like even after the USC game, um, there's a little post game tent we're under, and um, you know that was a tough loss. They felt like they could have had that game and a, a few plays that that Dylan would have wanted back. But he was so like um, steadfast in his belief, like they were going to be better in week two. Like that's what really stood out to me. And I I walked out of there and I told Bruns, I was like, I did, they feel like they they played like they're going in the right direction right now on offense. And um, he even said, we'll beat Wisconsin. He said that right there. He said, we're going to play well, we're going to get better, and we're going to beat Wisconsin. Yeah, but that flew and, under the uh, radar because it happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just think uh, th- that a lot of guys on offense, and you heard Dana say it yesterday, they didn't have, like, the points or the numbers necessarily to show for it in Los Angeles. They left some stuff out there but they knew it was out there and more gettable maybe than it had been, or it felt more in reach. And, um, you know, also a guy like Dylan's maybe looking at like what they're doing with his buddy, Jacory, you know, and you heard Dana yesterday talk about, you know, we're, they were kind of moving him around at three different spots and maybe that's a lot in his head. And, you know, I, I, I want a guy just focusing on one spot and doing it really well and, and uh, playing fast and it's simplifying. And so I think, um, not only for Dylan's sake, but seeing how others around him were getting that same treatment and the same, uh, okay, this is the direction we're going to go now, and maybe this will help you this way. That probably had to pump him up, too, seeing seeing that with other guys also. Um, and so, yeah, I do think there's, uh, there's a definite optimism and uh, lift in their step right now. And it's not like I think people were overly worried like Dylan – was going to hit the door or anything. But when you hear Dylan talking about 25 with an eagerness and you hear Ja'Cory Barney after the game uh, saying this is just a stepping stone and it seems like he's talking about a future much beyond just the next couple games, um, in this era we live in, that always, I think, lifts the fan base up too when they see that from two of your prominent freshmen talking that way. We're talking with Brian Christopherson, Husker 24-7. Uh, BC, as you look at, Kind of Dana Holgerson's comments yesterday where he's talking about, hey, the the guys that perform the best in practice are the guys that are going to see the field. And and you've seen that play out at a, at a couple of different positions over the last couple of weeks. How do you process that? It doesn't seem like it should be a shift, but a, a seeming shift away from maybe this philosophy of, hey, we're going to play the guys we think are the best, not just the guys that are showing it the best Monday through Friday. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's important to everybody on the team when they understand, like, there is uh, there is meaning. If you're going to say there's meaning to what happens on a Wednesday or Thursday, it has to show, like, in the rep count, too. Like, if, if it's going to be stressed uh, three days before a game, like, you know, you jump you jump off sides or you have a false start, there there's a payment for that, you know. Like, uh, uh, you're, you're hurting your team. Um, with an unforced error, and if it, you know, that's going to happen once in a while, but if it happens, you know, once on a Thursday practice and then you see it again in a Saturday game, that might be enough for a coach to say, you know what, it's not, you, you got to tighten the screws and you're going to sit over here for a little bit until you do. And, um, it, you know, sometimes uh, another guy, um, like, you know, like we can just talk specifically here in this case, like forfeiture or, Lyndon Meyer, they've been solid players for this team for a while. And um, it has to be a huge confidence boost for them uh, to get sort of this treatment from, from Holgerson and these reps. And, and you know, you saw Borkercher when he got the ball in space. Um, that didn't surprise me when he took that little pass that maybe should have been five yards and he made it 19. Because I remember mm. thinking in the spring game, uh, when he caught that ball on the run, I was like, "Man, he's a fluid dude. Like he's he's coming along there." And um, I I, I, I love Borkinger. 
Yeah, I thought he was going to be much more a part of it this year, like with in the pass catching game. I honestly did. I really, he was. I talked all off season about him. Is like, stop, don't forget about Borker. <laughs> and so, <laughs> well, well, how come you didn't um, yell at? You're so soft spoken. Like, come on, BC, <laughs> help me out. Yeah. I, I, I feel. Yeah, I, I always used to feel guilty. I'm like, is this just because I like him as a person? No, that's not it. He's really good. And I know I tried yeah, to get really his. Good. I tried to lobby to get his government name changed to Eddie during the broadcast. I don't think that sit well with his parents. I mean, Nate is fine, yeah. but he is pretty steady. Like I just think I know what I'm getting every time he's on the field. Yeah, I and everybody over there sees the stuff. So you know the the guys on the team they've seen all off season. Like you know Borkerter and Lindenmeyer, they put in the work. Like they they know that, and so. It's not going to bother that your locker room to see guys like that get rewarded. The other thing I'd say to this, though, I don't, I don't know know everything, but I, I know whenever I've interviewed Thomas Fedoni, um, he's been a guy who's been very loyal about this program. He grew up a, a Husker fan, like dressing up as a you know a, a Husker you know on Halloween and stuff like that. So this has always meant a lot to him to be in this program. So. I don't just uh, jump to conclusions. I want to see how it plays out. And I like yesterday when Dana comes in and he's very candid about this is why we did what we did. But you know what? Thomas had two of his best practices this week. So we'll see where that takes it. So, um, you know, we had a nice story with Borkerture and Lennon Meyer. Maybe we have a nice story on Friday where Fedoni gets a, a big player or two in that game. And so that that's the beauty of sports. Is I can't believe my guy doesn't have a this- touchdown. Yeah. It's hard to believe. But, it's it's uh, it's incredible. Yeah, I would have never guessed that. Um, there there's some there's some things like that you could name off like four or five things. You're like, if you had said this in August, you'd be like, well, what? What's that about? So, I thought he'd lead him in receptions um, too. And I, so I'm at because I'm a big fan. I <sighs> if I was in the lab, I would probably use seventy five percent of his personality to bottle for a player. I like I like Fedoni. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's wired like his head coach is uh, the head coach. And I think says. that's I yeah. think I think that's why Coach Rule has an affinity for him. I, I think you're 100 yeah. percent right, BC. Yeah. So, I mean, let's let's see where it goes Friday. Like, uh, it was an interesting storyline in the last game. There's no question when one of your starters, main guys, plays only three snaps, it's going to get talked about. But um, I'm hoping that there's some guys over there that maybe they're on the they were on the wrong end of it and the you know and the fact that they didn't play as much or something happened with in that regard let's see let's see how they answer that um so far when holgerson has challenged certain groups or guys they have seemed to answer that bell like you talk about their perimeter blocking has gotten better uh the o-line has played two of its best games the running backs uh when challenged to hit some holes better we've seen some of their best work so let's see where this one goes BC, when, you know, talking about whether it's the tight end room or, or any of these other positions, it, is it, is the hesitancy to, is the hesitancy to kind of either make these changes or, or be kind of a hard line, hey, the guys that practice the best are going to play, is the thing that keeps more coaches from that just the inability to stomach the idea in, in the transfer portal era that you might lose some guys that you just don't want to lose? That's a great question. I was thinking about that last night. It's it'd be so hard to to coach the way you want to coach sometimes now. I yeah. think. Um, I mean, it, because you are always like, there has to be that fear if you're real about it. Like with a certain player, if you think like he could really help us a year from now, but if like you know his reps dwindle these last few games, what does that mean? You know, as you head into this crazy December, and it is going to be crazy. There's no doubt about that. So. Um, I think there's no doubt that that weighs on coaches' minds. I don't know. There's probably some coaches who are able to to get a little bit past it and just be like, I got to do this the way I've done it, the way I believe in. And um, but there probably is some balancing act there that they have to. They're they're on a tightrope, I think, a little bit with that. And uh, no, that this is where maybe it helps where you, you get. In this case, you have sort of fresh eyes on it. Everybody kind of understands that in Holgerson. So there's that element that maybe people get like, okay, this guy's 
has a pretty accomplished resume. He just came in from the outside, and his initial look at it is producing these thoughts. Maybe that helps somewhat with players, and and they they can take it uh, the way they should take it and build off of it. But it's a really fascinating question you brought up that I don't think has an easy answer, and I don't think coaches think it has an easy answer. So, BC, do you think this will be one of those years where – Considering what's going on and how the season's played out and we have new eyeballs and we have roster limit discussions where this would be the the year where I think fans would not be up in arms over whatever happens in the portal. Kind of it, is the expectation level already being set that there should be a fair amount of movement? Yeah, I think it, it, it'll be helped. There are going to be days and there'll be, a am sure, a name or so where it does hit harder uh but you know i wish malachi the best but and maybe maybe people were sort of built up for it because it was the news had kind of traveled that that was a, a possibility before rule made it known but i didn't see like an overwhelming like or just a, a panicked reaction about a player who um was a big recruit and uh, obviously a local guy And I didn't think that was disrespectful toward Malachi or what he can do wherever he goes next. It was just more what you're talking about. I do think there are people understanding it's going to be how it's going to be with some guys. And uh, we just got to see how this all, uh, how it filters out and you get it down to 105. But I mean, um, I mean, it's just simple math, right? I mean, people are looking at it. They're like, they got to get rid of 35 somehow. I better get my, my stomach ready for whatever's going to happen because it's yeah. just coming. I, yeah, I just, I, and there may, there may be some surprises, but I just think if there's any off season for the fan base to probably just chill, I bet it's this yeah. one. Yeah. Right? Like, I just, I don't think they'll be near the, the hand wringing and, and, and consternation because, as Robbie likes to say, much like Thanos, it's inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I hope you speak that to truth. I hope that's what uh, that's what ends up happening. Um, you know. Well, you you don't want to be you don't want to see 107 posts and six pages of of on your message <laughs> board. <laughs> well, that's what that, that's the that keeps the 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 wheel spinning for the message board. So I guess I guess I'm all right with that. But um, yeah, hopefully people keep cool heads about it. It's going to be a, a kind of a crazy December, like yes, we haven't it seen will. before. Yeah. Uh, so, so just you know, buckle up and and kind of embrace it, and um, you know, keep keep some uh, leftover turkey rations in in your refrigerator, freezer in case you need it on certain <laughs> nights. I mean, all that, like every everything's got to be. You you just got to be at the ready for this. So it's going to be a, a wild month, uh, but at least at least. We got a bowl game, you know, and uh, if you want to talk to a guy who's excited about writing just a Tuesday bowl practice uh, report on December 10th, kind of, I'm that kind of guy. Like, I'm excited that we have that again. So um, that, that'll that help balance it out a little bit, too. I'm just excited that DB is apparently living in Candyland where he thinks there's going to be a drama-free offseason. That's great for him. Candyland. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, right. <laughs> Remind remind him of that one of these days in like uh, three weeks when someone laughs and people are losing their mind. BC, we appreciate the time as always. We'll talk to you again soon. Have a good holiday. Thanks, BC. Yeah, yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Have you not seen Django Unchained? What's with the Candyland reference? <laughs> That's what we're on. That's not the Candyland I meant, DB. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more at Sports oh, Radio. Oh man. We're back here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. That's DBM Ravi Lula here on the Pillar Exterior Stage. You know, we were talking a couple weeks ago about how you and I went out to Foling Warehouse Omaha. Now everybody that we're talking to can go out and check it out as well, whether it's just a group of your friends, maybe you got some family in town, and you're like, oh, man, we got to get out of these houses. These people are driving me crazy. Go over to Foling Warehouse. They've got four huge bays 30 lanes it's open to the public just go to foling omaha spelled just like bowling but with an f foling omaha.com to reserve a lane or you know you want to take your whole business over there they've got plenty of room for you to do whatever you need they've got two huge bars and you can bring your own food in they've got the drinks covered though hey that place 
A lot of wide open space. Yeah. In games. Yes. Sounds like being in this medulla <laughs> oblongata. Bowling where well, I That guy just... just like ran around. It's like this is like. <laughs> or you're playing bags and playing. It's just like gi- wide open. Giant Jenga. And, and my mind doesn't know what to do with it. They're that. throwing footballs and bowling pins. Yeah. It's like a physical manifestation of DB's brain. Just a bunch of stuff rattling around in there. It's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and and I mean the, the 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 bad thing is it's like if you're buttoned up, yeah, like I'll be buttoned up. Yeah, if you're a squirrel, I'm and I'll I, be a squirrel. I'm very rarely buttoned up. Yeah, so that's kind of, <laughs> that's not really where I live. I just, I'm just trying to <laughs> just trying to figure it out. It's <laughs> fun for me to try and make you have to try and keep the show on the rails. Yeah, I enjoy that. <laughs> I don't know, man. What's the I, saying about the blind leading the blind? <laughs> <laughs> I drive myself crazy. <laughs> we're we're just out there with the seeing eye dogs. I'm just like, can I pet that dog? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, we're leaving last night, and and LP's like, man, I needed that. That was a fun day. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, well, I'm the one that's gonna get the brunt of the criticism. If <laughs> got it. I mean, most a lot of people like this. Some people don't. I. Mean, at least we had a good game. Oh yeah, it was. I thought it was a fun broad. It felt a little more Manning cast than like a traditional bar- broadcast, like kind of a couple buddies just like having a conversation around a football game. I like that though. Yeah, I don't think it's for everybody, but I enjoyed it. <sighs> like if you want dry, I can be dry. Nah, nobody wants. I that. Need, it takes two to tango. I yeah, mean, it's, I'm telling you, we would. Like I even got the like. I think Larry enjoyed himself so much. He's like, oh, you need to come over. Oh, he wants to hang out now. <laughs> well, there's an inside joke there. So apparently, and I didn't realize this, mm-hmm. his name, like a couple doors down, mm-hmm. it's not three, it's four actually. So don't know. Not music. the band? No. no kryptonite? He's neighbors with Tony White. Oh, nice. Yeah. There you go. So I knew, then I knew it was safe to come to his neighborhood. Big T White guy? Yeah. There you go. Uh, Let's get to uh, Cody. He wants to talk a little class B and transfers. What was that guy's name? Hopefully he's talking about college transfers because I'm not sure I want to talk about high school transfers. What's going on, Cody? Cody. What's going on? Man, What's up, bud? Damon, Damon yes. I got a question for you. <laughs> what? Can what? You, can you spell aficionado? No. Because that reference last night had me. I made my wife rewind. I was like, hey, he's talking about me. So do you know how you know it was bad? I'm going to the restroom, and a couple of older guys that work there, and I know them really well. They, you know, um, we're, there's like a. Um, a little low key kind of hidden bathroom for like media and stuff when you're in a hurry, and so they clearly know the layout of the land. And I'm coming out. Wait, and is com- this the bathroom that you ran into Colt McCoy at? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it actually was. <laughs> what, what NBC game was it? Right? Yeah, 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 or no, it wasn't Colt McCoy. It was Jack. You ran into Jack in the bathroom. You were talking about it. Oh no, no, oh that was uh, Colorado. I think that was Colorado. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. he goes, he goes, man, you guys are a hit today. And he's talking to his buddy who's a little older, right? And he's like, yeah, our wives are just cracking up. So I go back into the booth and I tell Larry, I go, I don't know what's going on, but we're being re- <laughs> they're referencing us as old ladies and women are the ones commenting. I think we're probably making the guys mad. Mm. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and he's just in tears. But yeah, my, my little res- wrestling aficionado. How, how the are best things? part is you're talking all this wrestling, and then you have Ron Hickson on it. After. So I asked Larry, I go, hey, I go, were you just pretending to be the wrestling guy because we knew we were talking to Higgy at half? And he goes, no, we were supposed to start with softball. I had no idea. But Larry's so sarcastic. Like, you never know if he's being si- – he he is – he's a treat, man. Like, hey, he, When he rattled off about – I didn't think he would get Macy Peacher, and he knew right away that she was the third one going for four. I couldn't believe it. (laughs) I'm like, who told you that? I'm like, LP, who told you? (laughs) Who told you? uh, And and he's one of the he's he's the only guy I know that I can work with that has a shorter attention span than me. (laughs) That's dangerous. (laughs) I I mean, his his buddies are just blowing him up, and he can like multitask. Yeah, I couldn't do that. When I'm announcing wrestling, I can't have my phone near me because I cannot do that. Mm. Uh, no, I just wanted, first off, to give Tyler his flowers. I hope it doesn't get lost since Bennington did not win on what he did last night. Offensively, defensively, the long kick return. He was unbelievable. And then my final question for you guys, I don't know if you know, 
when will they start doing the cut for getting down to the roster? Will it be this December so guys can find new homes? Yeah, I think that I think that process is spring. sorry, Cody. That process is already going on. Okay, that that was my question. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, what? Have a good Thanksgiving. Wait, I have a I have I have a I have a, I have a oh, question. Yeah, What's up? What's up? <laughs> I, I I have I have some questions. Um, yeah. Who's who's your favorite in Class B? In Class B wrestling. Class B for wrestling. Oh, Class B, got it. Wow. You need, they, you need, you need, it, you you need a second, or you need a second, or. <laughs> yeah, there's a, no. It's Bennington's going to be close. It's all going to come down to who can make it the most points on the backside, because both teams are going to get the majority of their roster to state. But I just don't know what's going to happen with uh, getting you know their guys. Just got so many hammers with. The Ziola brothers, Tyler Harrell, Ryan Johnson, and they're going to be so tough. They got a big transfer from Pleasanton who moved to Omaha with Gatlin Capella. He's been state finalist the last couple of years. So they're they're loaded. And then Bennington, I mean, you can never count out Al Thorn. Hey, so did you watch Swoboda from Newman? No, I didn't. I was going to ask if you thought he was a better wrestler. Uh, if you if you thought he was a better wrestler or a football player. No, I I was working still, so I didn't get to see that game. You, I listened to a little bit, and uh, working. I actually I turned the game on when it was seven six, and I must have jinxed them because it got <laughs> out of hand pretty quick. <laughs> All right, Cody, man, enjoy the holiday. Yep, I'll see you in Iowa City Friday. Oh, nice. There you go. I'll be the guy that are still have they'll that will still have the dog sniffing my my bags to get in because <laughs> it's a I'll it's be, a I'll, it's I'll a joy to get boys. into that stadium. <laughs> yeah, I'll be with my boys from the three hundred eight, so you'll know where to find me. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> Those boys from the three hundred eight are not hard to find. Oh, six, that dude's a baller. Six thirty in Ames or in Iowa City. I'm sorry, blasphemy. On a Friday night, you would end up in Ames though. No, I know where I'm going. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot you're a freaking flyer over there. Yeah, um, <laughs> I know where I'm going. <laughs> so it's not like the dogs at Memorial Stadium where they let you pet them and stuff? So there's only there's only a couple of memorable places. Yeah. Oh, Ma- Madison and, and Iowa City. Yeah. Where you get off the, the bus and you lay your bags out and the dogs are like. And it's going to be pretty cold, so I hope they're efficient. Yeah. Let's move quick. And they're not all overly friendly, so I. I will not be trying to engage and interact with their German shepherds. Just, just, yeah, what have I you say that. Say? For, I say what that for Lincoln. What have you guys say? <laughs> Dude, I was on Pet Finder last night at like three in the morning. <laughs> Are you trying to find another Frenchie? No, I. So I'm open. Yeah. Yeah, I used to kind of be married to Frenchies, but I'm open to whatever. Maybe, maybe goes. something a little bigger. Nah, let's not get crazy. You know, a big dog. So it's more about the hair. You can get big dogs that don't have a lot of hair. Well, can I process through this out loud, or are you just going to shoot down? No, go for it. Well, that's what I'm processing through. <laughs> you don't got to get a German Shepherd. That's a that's a problem hair wise. That's such a dream dog. That there, if you don't want hair around, like that's a bad one. I know. Roggy's a mess. I just I so whatever. Maybe that guy, the officer in Lincoln, will let me have his dog. Probably not. She seemed to like me. If I had to guess, probably not. So negative. Well, they usually keep them after they retire. Usually the officers keep them. Who's they? The dog? The officer? Yeah, the, the officer. A, that officer? Yeah, usually they keep the dog after the dog retires. Are you sure? Yeah, a lot of times. You don't have to. Well, but maybe a lot I of, should go make nice with him. He was very kind. Maybe you uh, go be a canine cop. You can get a German Shepherd. Do <laughs> you think I have any kind of courage to put my life on the line every day? Not a chance. Yeah. You and me both, man. That's why I, we do this for a living. I do that by coming here. <laughs> what I do? Get I'm my, so, I'm so my, nice to you. Get my heart rate up. <laughs> you ever it. listen to our feedback? I, That'll kill you. <laughs> I can't wait to talk to our next guest, Brian Edwards. Go Billy Napier. <laughs> Here's Brian Edwards as we wrap up hour number two on Herd Out Sports Radio. DB, I'm Robbie Lula. B, what's going on, man? Good morning, fellas. Early happy turkey. Well, what are you doing being like 
up and at him and audio's working and everything two weeks in a row. Is, is this going to be a thing now? Yep, I'm on top of things. On top of we're down the we're coming down the stretch and uh, you got, oh, you're on your A game, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Almost <laughs> as much on your A game as Billy Napier and those Florida Gators, baby. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm stuck with him forever now. Yeah, might, a, as is Florida. You might yes. as well root for him. You might as well yep. root for him now. <laughs> got to. Got are you are you now. ever gonna come around? I mean, he's still two and ten in rivalry games and twelve and nineteen against power five competition. And I mean, we're supposed to win oh, man, the swamp. It's just Always, stats. in my opinion. <laughs> he's turning a yeah. corner, B. Yeah. He's turning a corner. <laughs> he's like, hey, he's still below a- five hundred. What took so long? <laughs> Listen, you're uh, you're you had a tough week last week. I mean, you would have missed on your Charleston Southern plus thirty three and a half against Florida State. I, did, I you know what? I didn't. I, I forgot all about the Charleston Southern play. <laughs> I forgot all about it. Did not do it. Thankfully, <laughs> Florida Thankfully. State covered by half a point. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> oh shoot! All right, let's uh let's stay close to home and start with hoops. Texas A&M, who fans around here remember as the team that throttled Nebraska in the tourney last year, get one of the other in-state faves in Creighton. Three and a half coming off a interesting performance against SDSU yesterday. What do you like? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm not, like, throwing stones at uh, – Creighton, because I have full confidence Greg McDermott will get that team uh, going later in the year. When, <clears throat> and, you know, I, hopefully they'll get Ashworth back in the next week or so. But without Ashworth right now, they're absolutely lost. Uh, they had nothing going offensively yesterday. Kalkbrenner looked slow, tired. Um, and AM, they had a five game winning streak. It gets snapped 80 to 70 to Oregon. But they, they, they led by three at halftime. And, um, you know, it was tied with the minute 22 left, and Oregon finished on a 10-0 run. I think A&M bounces back. I like the minus three and a half. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure that number should be a lot higher than it is, B, after watching Creighton the last couple games. That doesn't I, – I, honestly, I probably would have made that number like seven and a half, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I completely agree. Uh, B, as we get into some football this weekend, um, obviously – a lot of plays over the next few days, but what is your, I mean, so we're talking Florida, Florida state. How are you feeling about that one? Well, I feel better about it. If you're like 14 and a half and can buy the half point to 14 on Florida. Um, and I got only one of my accounts has posted first half plays and, and I got minus seven, minus minus one twenty for the Gators uh, mm-hmm. in the first half. So I like both of those um, with Lagway uh, playing like he is uh, and the defense playing a lot better. Um, I, I think Florida handles this business here and, um, and you know, and covers in the first half and, uh, and the game. Oh, so you're going, are you, are you doing multiple plays there? Or are you just picking one? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Florida, Florida minus 14 for the game. Uh, if your number's 15, just lay the 15 uh, at minus seven in the first half. Both of those. There you, there you go. Uh, one of the other big ones this week, sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit here, is because I thought this was maybe the most interesting play you gave us this week, that A&M and Texas game. Texas is a five-and-a-half-point favorite. What do you like? I like a and um, I like them being in bounce-back mode. Um and, you know, Texas is one and four against the spread in its last five. Um, the only uh, spread cover against Florida when it had a third string quarterback and, you know, was, you know, coming out of the Georgia game. Um, you know, A&M hasn't been quite as strong here uh, down the stretch, but I, I expect perhaps their best effort of the year at home in this rivalry game. I think the crowd uh, will be a big factor. And I like the uh, Aggies uh, plus five or five and a half. Uh, let's go to one of the academies with the Aztecs. How important will the hook be between three and a half and three here? Um, look, if you can get it at minus 130 or cheaper, 
I, I would do it. If it's more expensive than minus 130 to buy it to three, don't worry about it. Um, Air Force has covered four in a row. I mean, it took them a while to get it together, but they're playing their best down the stretch. They've won uh, three in a row. And um, flip side, San Diego State, they're in danger of finishing with its uh, lowest win total in more than a decade. They've lost five in a row, including back-to-back -back losses by margins of 21 points apiece. And Air Force uh, beat, on, beat up on them 49-10 to 10 last year and won 13-3 in San Diego two years ago. I like Air Force, hopefully minus three, uh, but three, three and a half is okay as well. B, there's a couple teams here, one that DB doesn't think is very good, one that we never know who they are, depending on what week it is. Oh, Arkansas. Mi Missouri, Missouri and Arkansas. <laughs> Missouri's a three-point favorite. How do you handicap a game like this? <laughs> I, I think this is my um, favorite play uh, of the week. Ooh, okay. I have um, – yeah, yeah. I um, was on Missouri last week against um, uh, Mississippi State. Uh, pretty pretty comfortable spread cover. I wasn't on them, but two weeks ago they covered at South Carolina and played a heck of a game. Uh, let's buy the half point from. Or actually, no, I'm sorry, we don't have to buy the half point. It, it's a it's a clean three uh, right now. Uh, Missouri's covered in, in three straight. And um, Brady Cook looked sharp last week, 15 to 20, 268 yards, one touchdown, uh, no interceptions. He's got a, now got a nine to two TD INT ratio, four rushing TDs. And Missouri's won back-to-back -back in seven of the last eight over Arkansas, including 48-14 to 14 in Fayetteville uh, last week. And Arkansas has dropped three of their last five, both straight up and against the spread in the losses by margins of 24, 32, and 10. I like Mizzou uh, minus three, and this is my favorite play of the week. Uh, one of these teams, kind of like Arkansas, when they don't turn the ball over, you, you, never, you wouldn't be surprised if they won a game or not, but and I guess the rivalry keeps the line low, but Kentucky catching some points at home against Louisville. I, Kentucky's hard to cap, um, but what do you think? Yeah, well, they've just owned this rivalry, and I think I've been on them all five times. They've won five in a row, both straight up and ATS uh, against Louisville, and not, um, not didn't always have the best team, and, and yet has, has just dominated – uh, the rivalry that I, I believe they call the Governor's Cup. And I like what I saw of the young quarterback, Bowley, last week. And Kentucky got uh, a couple of defensive players back uh, healthy. And um, it wasn't always pretty last week, but got some turnovers and, and got me the spread cover. But uh, I, I just think they own this rivalry, and they're at home. Uh, give me Kentucky uh, plus three and a half or four. All right, let's move over to the NFL uh, at least there's one good team playing on uh, Thursday. We got the Lions, at least. We may not have much else, but we've got the Lions. They're six-and-a-half-point favorites in the first half, minus 10 for the game. What do you like there? Yeah, I'm going to go uh, Lions minus six-and-a-half in the first half. That's my favorite play on, on this game. I'll also be on them minus 10, but I like the first half better. So uh, they have raced out to leads of 28 to 6 versus Jacksonville, 35 14 to Tennessee, 21 to 7 to Seattle at halftime of their last three home games. And in five of their last six road games, the only uh, uh, admission being uh, the Houston game, uh, they have had halftime leads of 14 6 at Indy, 17 3 at Green Bay, 21 10 at Minnesota, 27 6 at Dallas, 20 to 10 at Arizona. They're just a machine, and the Bears are winless in four road games, 0-3-1 against the spread, and they've lost five in a row, and they hate their head coach. So Detroit minus 6.5 in the first half and minus 10 for the game. Yeah, I don't think there's any question the Bears-Lions is going to outdraw the Giants and the Cowboys. I, I can't believe the dysfunction. And, B, full disclosure, three weeks ago I said I'd much rather be the Giants as an organization than Dallas. One of my more genius things that I've said, <laughs> OMG, that thing in the last two weeks has become a legit dumpster fire. Let me ask you about the Chargers, Brian, because it seems like, at least anecdotally, and you may know more getting behind the numbers, it seems like the public has been kind of slow to back them. Maybe they're just reluctant. They, they seem like they're a pretty good football team. They're laying a short number on the road. I guess the Falcons are, are dangerous. They're right there in your backyard. But it seems like the Chargers are a better team than the public probably thinks. I agree with that. And I think they're a better team than the Falcons. Although the spot 
heavily favors the Falcons with uh, two weeks to prepare and the Chargers traveling across country off of a Monday night game. But I don't care. I just think the Chargers are a lot better. I trust Harbaugh uh, to get his guys uh, ready. I think that the Chargers have the head coaching advantage. And I like the uh, Chargers minus one and a half or two. Or if you're if your money line's minus 125, maybe just go that route. Um, mm. I think the Chargers uh, get it done. The Falcons slumping here. And, you know, four targets for Kyle Pitts last two games, two losses, whereas he was starting to all of a sudden get seven, eight, nine targets a game, and they were winning scoring points, and he was racking up yards and touchdowns. They got away from that, which they often do. Give me the Chargers. B, last one here before we let you go. Colts minus two and a half at Pats. Yeah, I just think that uh, Anthony Richardson's playing better, and I think the Colts are better, even though they're on the road if, at three or fewer. I got to go Colts. And uh, not against uh, fading the Jets either with uh, Seattle and like the uh, Bengals and, and Steelers over 48. Thanks, all. Y'all have a great uh, Thanksgiving. B, Thanks, have B. a great holiday. Kicking off hour number three here on Herd Out Sports Radio AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities, KFOR and Lincoln. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula here at Herd Out Sports Bar and Grill. And there's a bunch of college football stuff we need to get to, DB. College football. We love college football. I love college. I love sports. I, I like sports, too. Yeah. Isn't sports fun? Sports is great. I watched Carolina get their head beat in. I don't even know why I didn't fast forward to the key plays. Yeah. Which is what I should have done. Yeah, but I could Auburn last night. Yeah, but yeah. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't turn it down. Mm. I was still still revving high. Yeah, yeah. So, speaking of Carolina, yes, I sport. know. So, so my man just says, "Oh, hey, I'm coming back. I'm not retiring." And they're like, "No, yeah, they're like, no, yeah. no, you're not. <laughs> you actually have to discuss that with other people." <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You don't think. Because we, we said joked, that that, happen. yeah, we're like, oh, does North Carolina know that? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I said. Because <laughs> we're like, oh, I guess Mac Brown. And is... then it was quiet for like a week, so I was like, oh, they, I, I they respect cool. Mac. Like they're gonna let him go out how he wants to. And we're like, no, no, you're not. No, you can't. I mean, you can't bring him back next year. You can't allow him to come back next year, which obviously they're not going well, they to. Nip, they nipped that in the bud. Yeah, pretty quick. They're like, ah, oh, you can coach the last game. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, it's the Wolfpack, right? Yeah, and I NC think State. that game is just a field goal. Yeah, it's NC State. and But that's it. I mean, I've said this before. I'll say it again. I think that's low-key a very good football job. Yeah. And we'll see what kind of talent it attracts. But I want, I want to see – I don't know. I kind of want to see North Carolina be good at football. That's, you have a strange affinity for them. I do. You know what it is. No. Ebene- well, Ebenezer Ekebon? No. Uh, Greg Ellis. The, there's a couple. Lawrence Taylor? Uh, it's a little before my time. Dre Bly. I did like Dre Bly. Johnson & Johnson. No. It really? Was, you know what? It's a guy you don't like very much. Why am I not surprised <laughs> that the tie that binds you, myself, and Carolina would be centered around somebody I don't like? I mean, could you just made it easy? No. Can't ever make it easy. Noah, so, Noah Brown? Nate no, Brown? We've talked about him. Recently, I think. So there's two reasons I like Carolina. I'll let you think for a second while I give you the obvious one. Okay. Well, three probably. Number one, I'm a big Jordan guy, right? So I like North Carolina because of Jordan, right? Easy peasy, yeah. whatever. Super basic. It is what it is. Number two. Big, big Joe Forte guy? King Rice? I actually McCann's. really did love Joe Forte. Oh, so um, but I was a big Rashad McCants guy. Good shooter. I was also a big Wayne Ellington guy. Um, oh, yeah. He could stroke it. I liked, stroke it. I liked Ty Lawson. I liked uh, Ed Coda. I was a big Ed Coda guy. Me too. Um, you're, you're leaving out Jeff McKinnis, but that's okay. I don't. McKinnis was a little early for me because he was on the 93 team, right? Mm. He was a little early for me. My first real memories of a Carolina point guard are, are Ed Coda. So why do you like – so who is the football the guy? The football guy you don't like. I, I think you didn't like him as a basketball player, though. Oh. I liked Ronald Curry. How are you a, of all <laughs> – I just like Ronald Curry, man. He was – and listen, you I – You be you. I get he was a super flawed both basketball and football player, 
but he was electric. And when you're, you know, I was, I, I, when was he playing? Late 90s, early 2000s? Uh, yeah. Like when I, you're, you know, I'm middle school, high school. I maybe not as, have been as much into the efficiency at the time. He was just electric to watch. Like he was, he was something else when he was, when he was going. This dude said electric. That's kind he of He was. Rich. He was. Come on. Come on. You know he was. He said, you're trying to come con- on. No, no. You're not Ronald my, Curry, you're electric. Not, you're Here's the my, other thing, though, and this friend. is a stupid reason. No. I you love- could have said Eddie Curry, and I would have been like, oh, yeah, more promising career. <laughs> Famously not a North Carolina guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tim Curry. Man. Anybody. Um, this dude said Tim Curry. I really could have said. electric you, like said a, you, you could have said Curry chicken. You know who yeah. I believe was... No, actually, you couldn't have. Never mind. Actually, more of a butter chicken guy myself. But uh, maybe like a paneer tikka masala. Nah. Or, or gulab jamun. I know that's your favorite. Uh, Apparently, Zoe had Indian yesterday and or, smashed it. Or hemoglobin. Um, <laughs> yeah, blood flow, man. <laughs> you know, you want, you want a deep cut curry that was associated with North Carolina? You remember James on curry? Oh, fuck. <laughs> They've had more folklore legends that yep. never turned out to be. He never even played for him, did he? Nope. He was committed, and then he ends up yeah. getting in trouble, and ends up at Oklahoma State. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was <laughs> that is a deep. That's cut. a deep cut. <laughs> I'm, surp- I'm impressed though that I knew that one. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty good. I remember him with uh, with Oklahoma State, and then that whole backstory. But no. So my super basic reason is I love the baby blues, <clears throat> and got good uh, taste. and the argyle, like the. The argyle designs that you do on stuff, yeah, I'm out. I love it. I have a quarter, love I have a quarter zip short sleeve. Yeah, I don't wear it. It's Carolina. It's supposed to be like a basketball button up. Yeah, like a zip up. I don't rock it, but it's pretty. Yeah, they've got they've got elite. Uniforms. My my brother gave me an amazing. He used to do this. He used to do work in Carolina. Mm-hmm. He brought back a couple of deals. They're just too small. Oh yeah, but oh, they're great looking though. Yeah, they have. I mean, that's I. I know a couple of Mac, but I told you, Coach Lichty, um, you know, Norris Hoops mm-hmm. coach, huge Mac Brown. Really? And, we, you know, he comes up in conversation just because we're always talking about the Steelers together. But I just can't believe, like, they, they – he shot a shot, and then they did him like that. Yeah. Texas is a powerful he player. He probably knew the way it was going to go and figured Got that was his – own- He probably thought it was his only shot to give himself a shot. Yeah. Because if you're if you're kind of backed into a corner and you're like, I think I see the writing on the wall. You think that's a better job than I do? I don't know. I think he called their he tried to call their bluff and they're like, No, we're we're moving on. Yeah. But I I do think it's a really good Speaking job. Speaking of North Carolina guys, it's Jeff Saturday. You big Jeff Saturday guy? Well, he played at Carolina. <laughs> I'm not a big Jeff Saturday guy. I kind of like him because he fine. he keeps it one on it. Yeah, he's I don't I just don't care. Like he's fine. I don't have any sort like, of like turkey. No, I actively dislike Turkey. I th- see. I I think that's a hot take. I think it's oh, it, po- it I is. think it's popular to hate on Turkey. Turkeys, like, how can you feel one way or another about? Turkey? I've been on this. I was on the front edge of this. Now I could see ham. You know, it's popular to hate on ham. I like ham based. I like ham. I think ham is good. I'd take ham over Turkey any day of the week. Shocker. One hundred percent. No, they're both fine. I, I'd smoke both of them, but. I'll take. I think ham is fine. I like ham more than I like turkey for sure. I am out. I on think turkey. it's just popular to hate on turkey. I was. I invented the popularity. Turkey never to did hate on turkey. Anybody. Yes, it did. It dried people. It probably has choked some people. Because if you can't cook, if, well, listen, a lot of people can't cook. <laughs> this is not news. <laughs> you ever been? Says the guy. Never mind. Let's get back to. Let's get back to knowing. Knowing how, show. knowing how all of our in-laws have a thing in common over our various marriages, yes, you yes. are very familiar with people who are unable to cook turkey. This dude said. <laughs> you can feel the tension in the air. As if, as, wicks. as if yesterday's, <laughs> as if Putney wasn't bad enough. Really? Um, that's just, why are you bringing up old stuff? I'm just saying. <laughs> a lot of people. Why? <laughs> In that group that can't properly <laughs> season things or don't cook know, things. I, don't, I, don't, or... I, don't, I might have smoked it, too. I don't know what you're saying. You don't know what I'm talking about? Man. Okay. I'm just, you know, oh I'm just my goodness. putting that out there. Um... Wow. 
<laughs> so why don't you think North Carolina is as good of a job as I do? Because I, I, everybody is supposed to be able to have success there, and it just hasn't. I don't know. There's it's a lot it's of not quite A and M. I know there's tons A and M, Auburn, but those all those programs. You know the difference about between those programs and North Carolina though, is, bit football is the second fiddle at North Carolina, which I actually think helps. In that situation, I think it helps. Yeah, I don't know. Like Auburn, if you're bad, like you, you should hit up Fedor. He was going to be the man. Just cause, and Mac had early success. He did. He's, I mean, he was, he's generally been successful. I, we thought Mac was like re, what do you call reinvigorated. it? There you go. Yeah. Cause I thought when they hired him, I was like, what are you guys You're doing? You're on that reinvigoration thing. Cause it came day men's. I am. I'm feeling good. <laughs> feeling good. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I thought I they were. said something inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> like how would that be any different? <laughs> I thought they were crazy when they hired him. Cause I, yeah, he hadn't coached in a while. I thought he was, uh, you know, I was like, that dude's old and washed. What are we doing? And he had a pretty good run there early. It's obviously faded off. I think there's a certain point where like he looks tired, I think. And I, I think the way college football has gone, you just can't be that anymore eh, unless you've got like Saban probably could have kept doing it because he kind of had the infrastructure in place, but he also got tired, right? Like, I think that's a hard job to do as you age and lose some of your energy. Maybe they need to go to game day men's health, yeah. but um, just, just do it. <laughs> part of the reason I think Carolina is a better job than like Auburn <laughs> Is I think the real I think the expectations for Carolina football are fairly reasonable, whereas Auburn has totally outlandish expectations. You know the funny thing program. is, like if you just kind of go through the laundry list of of Carolinians in the NFL over the past twenty five years, it's a there's a it's lot an of amazing them. list. They've had a really good talent, yeah, and that's part of the reason I like the job because you can get really good players there. Yeah, and I mean, everybody wants a Greg Ellis. It's a Winnable. Shoot, Dallas would take Greg Ellis back. Hey, they might. Take, they might take Mark McCarthy back. So I don't know if that's his. I was he just talking? I mean, it's Jerry Jones, so probably. So he did douse the Dion deal, and I didn't get to this because, um, obviously, <laughs> life got in the way. Like going on. But like the Jerry's interesting. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's the word I'd use, but he's something. It's. I, you I think he's still firing on all cylinders. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because um, it's not that much different than he's been the last twenty years. Like this is kind of who he is. Yeah, I would. I would be curious to see if he pulled this off after all that's been said in that locker room and in the media behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Pulled. Pulled what off? Keeping McCarthy. Keep, keeping McCarthy there. I mean, maybe like a guys like guys like Parsons, where like they go behind closed doors and apologize. But I, I I'm not a big embarrass me in public and apologize in private guy. I just used that on somebody the other day. You got it for me. I know I did. I gave you credit too. I was like, hey, you don't get to do that publicly and then send a text message later and be like, oh, my bad. You should see my DMs. There's like some hateful people, and it's like I don't know if they're drunk or. And then, like, later on, it's like, hey, man, my bad. Yeah. Like, you guys. Yeah, it's always like, oh, they're, they're trashing you on the timeline, and oh, the yeah. apology comes in the oh, DM, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. yeah, we don't play like that. It's not how we do that here. So, I, like, I don't know about that job, though, because clearly, you know, you got to fill probably both New York jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, your boy is now safe as a kitten and will be in the discussion for Coach of the Year in Philadelphia. I, I got Nick Sirianni. Told you quietly, that's a really, really good football team. They are. Uh, I, and and he's not going to get – and I heard my man Canty, and I love Canty because he, yeah. he's not a contrarian, but he does – he acts way more player mm. than media. Yeah. And he's like, why would you give that guy credit? He's just become the CEO and removed himself. He didn't even hire his coordinators. And I was like, sometimes that's part of it. Yeah. Self awareness is part of it, <laughs> right? Maybe a really big part of it. But they're they're Philadelphia is legit. I, uh, I think Austin asked me yesterday. He goes, no, no, no they got to play without slaying Graham. But he goes, would you? Do you trust? The, if I had to pick somebody to make the Super Bowl, do I trust Philadelphia more or Baltimore more? You asked me the same question last year, and I landed on Philadelphia. Was that Austin's question? Yeah, it's a good question. It is a good question. 
I meant to pick a bone with Austin yesterday. What do you say? We put a terrible picture out on social media, and I got murdered. Really? And I just had to eat it. I mean, you know, people with their snarky comments mm-hmm. and stuff, so it's like, I'm like, he should have asked me if he could tweet <laughs> that out. Was it from, like, the game? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know, and you get the you suck and act joy. I'm like, Austin, run that by me. <laughs> well, it's really not his fault that people are just like that. Give me a heads up, brother. Yeah, I'm telling you, your boy is like Team Teflon. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. Gotta be. Oh, 100%. Gotta be. So, you know the cool thing? What's and that? this is weird. And I and I, I, I told this to Coach Samanji. Like, doing what, he, what he's going through mm-hmm. made all the criticism, like, the, the snark and. Yeah, none of that matters. Yeah, it made it a lot more bearable. Yeah. It's funny. That's low-key one of the things that I've always liked about you is – I'm going to say something nice right here. You ready? Uh, Can you prepare yourself? I know this doesn't happen very often. Shane, make sure you mark this. Um, <laughs> that's all. Austin, I know you're listening. You might have to clip this out later. Um, one of the things I've always appreciated about you. Say what you got to say. Is people talk crazy to you a lot. Mm-hmm. But like you have been through some real life stuff. And you have this ability to keep everything in perspective most of the time. That I've always admired because and that's one of the things I feel like we sort of bonded over is like, hey, I've been through real stuff. I don't care. Like the craziness can I can take or leave, right. which I've always appreciated. That's my guy right there. Um, It's funny, too, because I spent my whole drive and I was late because I had to get ding dong. She man, this little girl is going to be the end of me. <laughs> but I had to drop her off before I went to Lincoln. Yeah. And I'm taking her to my sister in law's and. Josie's hilarious. Like, she's just up partying into herself. And, I mean, this little girl, her hair and the pajamas and, you know, picking out her clothes. And I'm like, look, girl, like, dad's on the clock. 8.15, we got to be. <laughs> she's asking for pancakes time. late. <laughs> so I called my man down at um, Gavin, our producer. Mm-hmm. And he said, hey, G-Man, like, I know I said 9.10. It's going to be closer to, like, 9.30. Don't panic. Like, we'll get the, we'll hit this on one take and mm-hmm. be good to go. And. In the meantime, like DJ called. So I talked to him for 37 minutes. Mm. From I would say that's door to door. Almost like, and I wait. Almost I, exactly. I circled the stadium because he was still talking. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, because it's like 34 door to door, isn't it? Yeah, got me through the day. There you go. Right? But so like the sports thing, it's it's for – for the for the jobs and for guys like Jerry Jones and and McCarthy because I think I think Dion stays he he put water on that the other day I th- I don't think you have old boy commit uh, at the quarterback spot without Dion staying and Dion kind of does what you don't expect him to do so mm-hmm. I think he wants – everybody says he's leaving Colorado yeah but he wants he wants to subvert expectations yeah so I th- I think yeah. he's gonna at least I think there's only one scenario in which he leaves and that's if whoever drafts Shador wants to bring him. I don't. I just. I think he knows his own limits. Maybe. I, I just think that would be in general and, really hard to say no. And to. he's not in control. Yeah. Like like we in the we, NFL. You're, yeah. Like Colorado's his party. Like so, I could see. There's only one or two guys I could see Jerry Jones hire. I just think that would be really hard to say no. And to I think Vrabel's gonna have his pick. So Vrabel should definitely have his pick. Uh, can you believe that guy's not coaching? No, I cannot. I mean, you say what you want about Belichick. Well, you Vrabel, least, Vrabel can get some help with clock management. At least you can under like I understand Belichick because he's in his mid seventies. Like I get it, right? I can understand being like I don't know, and it it did not look good at the end in, in New England, right? You know who somebody needs to hire? Who? If you if you have a a, a blossoming team, mm-hmm. you have some good core pieces. You're young, you're, but you're you you need some some substance. Mm-hmm. You need to hire Pete Carroll. Ooh, that's it. He does seem more energetic, even though him and Belichick are the exact same. They're age. like they're not, the but same. they're polar opposites. Yeah, yeah. Pete Carroll is still sitting out there. Yeah, he is a guy that would be really interesting in certain spots. Can you? Are you? Do you supp- have a team on top of your head that that fits that mold for Pete Carroll? Yeah, but they don't need a coach. Who? You know who? Where Pete Carroll would be fantastic? Where? Atlanta. Hmm. Yeah, I could see that. He, Rams. Seattle, yeah. the Rams. Ironically enough, like I mean, he would. The he, Rams certainly don't need a coach. So but. one, so one team is very interesting. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he wants to get into a bad front office deal. Yeah. 
Chicago. Mm. Ch- Chicago That's where would, should go. would be – he may be a little too dry for Caleb. Mm, okay. He – Vrabel – I don't know if you know this about Vrabel. Pretty nonsensical. Pretty no nonsense. Non sense, yeah. Nonsense, like nonsensical is a yeah, different thing than no nonsense. He's about no nonsense. Yes, correct, hundred percent. Okay, so and Caleb might be a little, and I'm not saying Caleb is. He just may be a little too extra for yeah for Vrabel. Carroll could manage that, hundred percent. But I just don't know about Chicago's front office. If I'm Chicago, I'm totally calling. They need maturity. Yeah. If if that team can mature, mm. they would be Pete, very Pete very. Carroll scary. at Chicago is interesting. I'm telling you, that's a good one. So where does Rabel go if you don't like him in Chicago because of the front office? You know why? Or because of Caleb? I would I would hire Rabel in New York. Uh, Jets or Giants? Giants. Mm. It's good ownership group. They are. That is a good. Low key, that is a good. That's the difference between I, the Jets I, and the Giants. I would. I if I'm the Giants, I hire. Because I, I probably Rabel. like the. Jets roster better right now overall unless I ha- unless I get hamstrung with Aaron Rodgers again next year but I agree the ownership group between the Giants and the Jets dramatically better yeah, than the I Giants. would I would that's if actually I'm, a functional I'm, organization if I'm the Giants I hire Rabel mm, that's a good call and now you don't have to, you get to pick your own quarterback now yeah and and just imagine Pete Carroll in Chicago yeah because Pete Carroll can definitely de- definitely and, deal with and their Williams. and their defensive pieces. Yeah, they would get back. Like I'm just telling you, they'd be good immediately, right away. Yep, that's a that's that's a really good call. I had forgotten Pete Carroll. Like I'd forgotten all about him. You know, because there's some bad jobs, right? I mean, I Vegas is a terrible job. Vegas is bad. Jets is a bad job. Where's this? I think the Saints is a bad. job. Oh, I agree. The Saints is a very bad job. Horrible job. Although they're going to have some money coming off the books, but fudge. But do you? Want, are they going to spend it? You're having a, money and spending money aren't the same thing. Now that conference may be a little advantageous. Yeah, NFC South is winnable. But what's that? I don't know that I love that. Saints is a better job than Vegas or Jets to me. Agreed. But I still think it's not a great job. Like it's somewhere between. Like it's probably a lower middle class job if I had to give it a, a spot. It's not open, and we talk about it as though it is. What about Jacksonville? I don't think that's a good job. I can't believe I'm going to say this because I I make fun of you about Trevor Lawrence, but he is good enough if you have a guy that believes in him. Yeah, I just don't know if it's. I don't know if lost cause is the right term, but we're pretty deep. Jeez. <laughs> no, but we're pretty deep into it for him to change who he is or what he's been. Yeah. Like, he's had a couple good years. Obviously, the talent's there. But however you want to quantify his talent, whether you're in my camp or in your just, oh, he's just, but he's talented regardless. Like, however you want to measure <laughs> you it. see Austin? Not yet. <laughs> um, hyper-talented guy, whatever, however you want to quantify that. But I don't know if it's just too... Like, are we too deep into it for him to change his spots? Like, can a Jaguar change his spots? That's the million-dollar question. He's young. I, and I actually don't. But he is seasoned and more mature. I mean, he's been married for four years? At least, I think. And he's been in the NFL for a while now. Yeah. I mean, he's, is he in year six? Five. I'm not sure. But, he, like, he's, he's not young, right? Right. right. And I it, mean, kind of. He's not new. I should say he's not new. He is pretty young still. I think he's still only 26, 27. Kind of like how you act, brand new? Yeah, I, lo- I act like I just got Trevor here. Trevor Lawrence is only 25. Jeez. So, I mean, maybe you bet on that, but you are saddled with him if it doesn't work out because of the contract. This dude said saddled with a guy that he called a generational talent. Listen, well, I'm just because you're generational talent up. doesn't mean you're going to ever be any good. You wanted, You just want a quarterback, don't you? Hey, your quarterback is saddled up too. Let's ride. Wow. <laughs> Was that a shout at me? <laughs> That's TV. I'm Robbie Lillo. We'll be back more here at Sports Radio. Oh. Welcome back here at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities, Campo War and Lincoln. That's TV. I'm Robbie Lillo. It's time for Bet On It, brought to you by War Horse Sportsbook, the best place in Nebraska to place your sports bets, whether it's in Lincoln or in Omaha. Get out to the casino and get your sports bets in live. Uh, you've got your, your, your in-game, your parlays, your straight bets, whatever you can think of, props, 
they've got you covered on nearly every major sporting event, including all the ones coming up this weekend. A uh, lot of good football, a lot of good basketball. <laughs> Watching my dog with the zoomies. <laughs> Can I bet on? Can I? Can I? Can I bet on Buddha? Dude, that's how Frenchies are. <laughs> I know. They just They're are. just like little balls of energy. It's incredible. <sighs> do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite game this weekend? No, not yet. Okay. You're not, not like geared up for one. I'm not super locked. Okay. Um, you're gonna spend a day kind of figuring it out. Yeah. I mean, who know? Like, I'm worried about like what's gonna show up at my house. Later, so I'm not like, well, I'm Caleb has who like, who's couple, gonna couple, yeah couple. who's gonna show up at your house? Yes. <laughs> Maybe bring some of these Jehus. Like, <laughs> you, you afraid the whole quartet might show up? <laughs> Caleb Benning. It's just too hard to. It's too cold to cook. But I, I'll, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm, contrary to the stereotypes, I am a brother that will grill out in the cold. So, <laughs> is that a stereotype? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And I'm not moving my stuff to the garage. Yeah, man. no. I'm out there on the deck braving the elements. Yeah, you just, you know, you got to have a little drink, keep you warm. That'd be great. Right? Just... Although on a day like today, with my one would turn into 31. So. Well, maybe we stay off of that then. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even take a dude until Friday. You're good. Dude, we leave tomorrow. Well, just have somebody drive you. <laughs> Just have Caleb. Hey, can I get a ride to Iowa City? No, we fly out. No, you have Caleb take it down to the airport, though, with you. <laughs> just like, hey, bud, let's go. Dude, be like, who are you? <laughs> Who's this guy? Let's get, just make sure the quartet leaves an extra spot in the car for you. <laughs> uh, let's get to our guy. We got a special caller in, in bet on it. He's uh, very familiar with the gambling scene. Our guy, Big A, what's going on, bud? Happy Thanksgiving, guys. What, what's up, big timer? How are you, how you feeling? Happy Thanksgiving to Ravi. <laughs> is it the gravy thing? You're, is he, he making mad with the gravy ever, again? If you are ever in New York, <laughs> do not tell Big Phyllis about this sauce and gravy stuff. You are not welcome. Mama Dukes will not be cooking you dinner. We will take you to some, I'll take you to like a kale bar or something because this stuff is just, I, this is bananas at this point. Man. Are, are you serious? Like, what I'm a protein guy, Big A. I don't like my meat wet. Like, what's wrong with that? I prefer it that way. These people, like, I we go to these steakhouses and stuff, and there's like this Bernay sauce and stuff. I'm like, why would you ruin good? Why would you ruin good protein? I don't know <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I don't know if you try to walk me into these <laughs> trap doors <laughs> with some of the things you say to me. <laughs> Big A, you right now. Big A, are you a big wet meat I'm guy? In, <laughs> I'm in Man, I want my meat wet. Oh, God. <laughs> I tell you what. I tell you what. I'm here for. It's closing day at Finger Lakes. <laughs> I, found, I found a great person to go to eat with. Oh. <laughs> Me too, buddy. We had a good time here the last three weeks of this meat. But I, I, got, I got a question up there, though. I have a question for the pizzas. Right, because I know you like pizza, oh. but the oh pizza up God. there, but the pizza up there is not overly sauced. Are you okay with that? It's not overly anything. This is the worst garbage I've ever eaten in my. <laughs> oh, life. is it really? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. What makes it bad? I because of that? Had, Monday night, I had some homemade. Uh, I had some homemade uh, fajitas. Yeah, and burrito bowls. Yeah. Man, this young lady cook, can cook it. She could cook it, my man. Uh, did, did, she, did she? Did she? Did she re 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 fall in love? Because I know you were shooting your shot hard. I, you're like, I'm rooting for you. She come back around. Oh, no, there's a new one. Oh, what happened? What happened, what happened to happened the? In, what happened? What happened in? What happened in Farmington State in Farmington? <laughs> it's a new one, and she's cooking for you already. Yes, sir. Wow. I think that's part of the entrance yeah. exam to hang out with Big A is cooking, right? <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it's a big – I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very distant second uh, in things of importance <laughs> that they bring to the table, but, yes. I think, we already, I think we already um, talked about the first one today, Big A. We have. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, what, what's a Thanksgiving look like for you, though? Like, what, like what's ideal? Uh, uh, we, so I'm driving home tonight. I got a five and a half hour drive home from Farmington to go home. Mm. Um, mom's already, 
mom's uh, making the stuffing as we speak, preparing the stuffing as we speak. So we'll get home, get to sleep, uh, get up in the morning. I make my only contribution is the cucumber salad. Grandma passed away like oh, 10 years ago. She used gosh. to make it. I took that over. I make the cucumber salad so I can say I participated. Uh, and then I eat anywhere between three and a half and six pounds of food from <laughs> three thirty in the afternoon until about nine at night. Um, the usual, you know, like normal people, I put a ton of gravy on my food because I'm like 11% brown gravy. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, turkey stuffing, mashed, candied yams, candied carrots, regular carrots, regular yams, corn, mushrooms, the cucumber salad, the best rye bread in the world baked by my man Giovanni. And a guy, I got a guy named Giovanni making me the best rye bread in the world. You know I'm, yeah. you know I'm OG. He's a little backwards. Big A. <laughs> That's the most Italian sentence I've ever heard in my life. My bread guy, Giovanni. Like, Making rye. <laughs> yes, sir. He makes everything. Yeah. Mom's got the most, mom's got the greatest cheesecake in the world in the oven as we speak. Getting ready for tomorrow. Yeah, that would be like me saying, yeah, you know, my best friend Tom whipping up, the, you know, the best macaroni and cheese ever. Yeah, I probably would never. No. Yeah, not <laughs> no. Not happening. Um, Big A, let me ask you. Hey, my my friend Betty. <laughs> let me ask you about. Let me ask you about the menu, here, Big A, because I know some. I know some of the big Italian families don't always do the traditional Thanksgiving. Sometimes they give a little more Italian twist with some of the dishes. Are you like a traditional Thanksgiving guy, or you go a little more Italian with it? We've never had anything except the bird and the trimmings. Okay. okay. Mom is very, very. Mom is very, very strict about that. What's okay. the best side? And I'm okay with that. I mean, I mean, you can throw the guy. You can throw a guy a stuffed mushroom every now and then. That's fine. But I mean, I, she doesn't do it. Um, her stuffing is out of this world. Her stuffing is just, and it's very simple. She puts mushrooms and liver. Now you couldn't get me to eat a piece of liver mm. on a bet. Yeah. You could tell me I wasn't getting meat for a month, and I'm not eating a piece of regular liver, buddy. <laughs> but in this stuffing, in this stuffing, it it, it makes the stuffing goaded. I mean, the stuffing's out of this world out of this world it's weird like that because i know some people like livers in their dirty rice and yep. I, i'm just thinking to myself I, yeah i don't know man it's some uh, i mean i'm gonna take your word for it but it doesn't sound appealing gonna, is it cooked first and then in the oven or is it brown in the I'm oven cooking right now cooking right now okay Liver's cooking right now okay I, uh, I'm going to stay out of the liver situation because you're definitely going to make fun of me if I do, if I don't. But um, Big A, what uh, – so you've got – we got the stuffing. What are we doing dessert-wise? I know you're a dessert guy. Come on. Greatest cheesecake in the world. She's baking the greatest cheesecake in the world. Gallagher Steakhouse in Manhattan is the only steakhouse that can – the only place in the world that can rival her cheesecake. Mm. But cheesecake is, is second to none. Uh, and it's a basic American cheesecake. She'll make a little homemade strawberry uh, topping for that, but I stay away from the straw. I don't want to. I don't want to start eating too many vegetables and fruit. I don't need to go into anaphylactic shock on Thanksgiving. <laughs> if I start eating some of this natural stuff, I don't know what's going to happen to my body. I mean, it took a long time to get this physique. I tell people all the time, round. If people tell me to get in shape. I tell them round is a shape. So I'm good. I ain't going to mess with these vegetables and fruit. Um, Overrated. Wake up with a little bowl of Cheerios to, to, to get the stomach going. Maybe start a little half a salami sandwich at about noon. And then uh, whip up for a big day of eating. <laughs> hey, I, I got one for you, too. If you if you can pull over or maybe use your phone app. or I'm sure there's stuff up and down the drive on your way home. But take the Louisville Cardinal today. Getting three from Indiana here in about an hour. Louisville Cardinals getting three. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I love the Packers tomorrow. Do and you? I don't really get involved anymore, but yeah, I love the Packers tomorrow. So, why? <laughs> no, I'm just asking. I mean, you usually get an inkling. I like the way you think. I love the Packers. If I'm being completely honest, <laughs> yes. I have a friend that really loves the Packers tomorrow. I did not accept the ball on the spot. <laughs> My buddy is gold. My buddy is gold. He loves the Packers tomorrow. I can't. Get, I can't. I gotta change the names um, to protect the innocent. Here. Your buddy. But, your buddy Mike. Big, big A out here. Andy. My buddy Andy. Andy. My Andy my yeah. Buddy Andy loves the Packers tomorrow. Now if you just said Vito or like you could have dropped some names and I'd have been like, oh yeah, yeah, he's he's in the know. Nope. He's, uh, changing names to protect the uh, guilty. I'm, I'm telling you, Big A, you can get a whole salami sandwich if you take the Cardinal. 
But I, I, I listen. You know, I could get twelve salami sandwiches, whether the Cardinals win or lose. <laughs> You gotta know who to test it. A little cereal. You gotta open it up a little bit with the cereal. And then to use horse racing terms, the salami sandwich is like a three eighths of a mile blowout the morning of the race. Like you're just like, all right, let me go get Bubble Air in his lungs, make sure he's ready. And then we uh we put the rye bread from Giovanni. We put the salami right on top of the rye bread and we're ready to roll. That's uh, you're guy. the best, man. Enjoy the holiday, buddy. Happy Thanksgiving, big A. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Yep. That's Bet On It brought to you by War Horse Sportsbook. We'll be back with more Herd at Sports Radio. Wrapping up the show here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities, Camp O'Rourke and Lincoln. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula here at Herd at Sports Bar and Grill. We are joined now by our friend Jessica Cootie from Huskers Radio Network. Jess, how are you this morning? I'm good. How are we doing, fellas? You guys saved the best for last today. <laughs> we did. We oh, got to send people into Thanksgiving with something to be thankful for. Hey. I love it. Before the pleasantries, I appreciate <laughs> you, like, practice. You know we have to travel together, and I have to see Coach Riola. I appreciate you reminding him that I said he didn't have a good poker face. Do you see how he almost was going to bristle up? I'm glad you kind of saved me by saying <laughs> He wears his emotions on his sleeve. I was like, oh, my gosh, this guy's going to want to truly fight me tomorrow, and the plane is too small. He was. He was a little bit like, what the heck are you talking about? He goes, why would, why would Damon say that? <laughs> I've been waiting for the chance to ask him about it, and so uh, I sprung it on him, but he, he, had, he was laughing about it afterwards. But at the time, yeah, he had no idea what I was talking about. I was like, I'm just giving you a hard time. Are you <laughs> but, Hey, in, in your defense, I asked Dominic about it, too, and he, he agreed with you. He said, yeah, he has a horrible poker face, so <laughs> he agreed with you. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, a brother's never going to say anything nice about his brother's I poker mean, face. I mean, do you ever watch him? You know exactly <laughs> what Donnie's thinking by how he looks. They, are, they the, are they the most fun group for you to kind of patrol on the sidelines? Oh, it's hard to beat that D-line. Is um, it? Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, the defensive line, they just think, and Tara Sight, you know this, they've been, since last year, uh, from the start, I've, I enjoy, because they, they have so much fun, and they are, he, uh, Tara Sight allows them to be them, and they are, I mean, they'll be serious when they need to be serious, and I, I love that they're kind of, Ty Robinson is one of the first guys to get on people to, to go up and down to the linebackers or defensive backs. Hey, let's go. He calls them. He's called them up a few times to defense. He'll be the first to call guys out, but they also enjoy themselves and have a good time. And so, um, you know, especially when, when things are going good for that D line, they like to enjoy themselves and it's fun to watch. Jess, I got it. Since we were talking about Donnie, I, I got to ask, there was that video that went around. I know you're on the sidelines. Did you get a sense of what the deal was at all after Wisconsin? That whole thing just seemed really strange. I have no idea. You know, I mean, I I know that obviously um, Dottie played at Wisconsin, and so I, maybe there's some history there. But um, I think he's just a fiery guy. Yeah, he's one of those, he's one of those defensive or those offensive linemen and defensive linemen. It's like they have this switch. The best mm. ones have this switch. To where you are, like they're one of the nicest people. Like I love talking to Donnie off the uh, off camera, off offline about you know he he's got a his family has a like a beehive farm thing that they have fresh honey in Hawaii and it's crazy. He would tell me about that and just you know stuff outside of football. I mean he is just a joy to talk to, but man he is all business when he's on the field, and I think a lot of those linemen are and and D line too ty robinson is the epitome of that and so i think he just has this switch to where you know he and he he wanted that one bad uh mm. you know you're gonna say it last night about um you know just i've been a fan of this program since my brother played here and i i wanted to beat wisconsin and that's his alma mater so he just he wanted it really bad and for his guys and uh you know just for this program and so i think it just meant a lot to him and um yeah he's just a pretty when he's on that football field, he's a pretty fiery guy. Are you surprised? I know our listeners won't be that you're the one that had to kind of talk me off the ledge when you said – I was talking about women's basketball, and I said, man, that's one Nebraska's got to get. And you're basically like, listen, DB, that's the first game they played without pots. Can you chill? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, good point. <laughs> like, 
when you're watching yeah. the, when you're watching those unfold, you kind of get that perspective being so close to that team, don't you? Yeah, well, and you know, it's I I think Creighton's still going to win some games. I think that's that's a good you know, basketball down the team. Road yeah, is going it's going to it's not going to be a bad loss. It's on the road. You know, it was close. You know, it's not going to hurt Nebraska. I don't think it was what you could call a bad loss. And, you know, especially the first one without pots, they had just lost, I believe it was on Tuesday. So that's a quick turnaround to figure out how to manage a team with someone that's such a big piece. And so, um, but I think what you saw, though, is you saw Britt French really emerge as being more aggressive, and she's going to have to do that now with the, the absence of Natalie Potts. So they're just going to have to figure out how to play with her. We've still got some really good pieces. Obviously, Alexis Markowski one of the best posts in the country. She doesn't, she's way underrated, doesn't get enough credit outside of the state of Nebraska. And, you know, Britt Prince is, is Britt Prince for a reason. And then you, you've got some other really talent. Hake has come on. So I think you've got some good pieces. It's just they've got to figure out how to do it with Potts. Potts is not only, you know, she's a Big Ten freshman of the year last year, but it's also her mentality of just being all she's done her entire life is win. And so she just has this killer mentality of, um, you know, she believes no doubt, no matter what, they're going to find a way to win. And that's not always the case with every single athlete. And so it's just her, that um, mentality too, I think they're going to miss even as much as her production on the court. But they just got to figure out, uh, you know, they've got some depth. They just got to figure out how to, how to do it without her. And, um, but that was the first one without her. And so I think that's why it made it a little bit more challenging. And plus, Creighton always says this, I feel like it gives Nebraska everything they put up goes in, and it's hard to outscore threes when you're scoring two. Yeah, so that's what that might be the unintended consequence, too, because if there's been a little bit of a bugaboo for Coach Williams, it's been defending the defending the arc. I'm, I'm kind of glad that this happened early in the season because I think that may be an adjustment they have to make um, if, if they want to get to where they want to be. Yeah, and I think, you know, losing um, – uh, one of the better defenders in the league in Jazz Shelley, she was really, really good at that. She would always, almost always be matching up against the opposing team's best player. And, you know, uh, even Darian White was a really good defender too. And so they do, they have to find, their guards have to be, uh, find a way to, to improve at guarding the perimeter. Uh, and I, I think it's, uh, again, when you've got freshmen like Britt Prince and Coach Williams told me this, earlier like a couple weeks into the season that she has the potential to be an elite defender it's just different when you start having the guard as a freshman on this level it's just a different animal and you know a lot of these freshmen coming in and, and we hear that on both both men's and women's side a lot of times these freshmen have not had to play defense their entire life and now you have to all of a sudden and it's an and very crucial part of the game that you have to figure out how to do it and so um you know, I think it's a work in progress, but I think it got. Um, I think that Britt's going to be really special on both ends. I just, I think it's you know, again, just figuring out how to defend at this level, and uh, some of the other guards are going to have to really, um, yeah, uh, manage doing that. But also, Creighton's just a weird matchup for Nebraska because it's you know they're they have a hard time guarding Alexis Markowski inside, but yeah. then you know Nebraska's bigs have a hard time guarding the guards outside. So it's just kind of a weird matchup I feel like for both teams, and it's. It's almost like which strength pulls out, and it turns out Creighton, Creighton's strength of being really uh, efficient from the perimeter on Friday night ended up uh, not knocking off Nebraska on Friday. Uh, Jessica, speaking about Nebraska, trying to figure out how to defend on a Friday night, obviously Caleb Johnson's <laughs> going to be a really challenging aspect of this game against Iowa. What do you think that looks like for a Nebraska team that maybe is going to be able to really load up against an Iowa team because of their quarterback situation, but Caleb Johnson and their running game have still been really, really good. Yeah. And I think that um, this is a group that takes that on as a challenge and on, and probably a nice welcome to not have to worry about some of those big shots on the outside, like they've had against USC and some of those other teams. But I, I think in with the weather too, uh, I just actually uh, Sierra Wright is my corner for conversation this week, and I chatted with him. Oh, I bet that'll be a gym. That. Oh, it's it's great. It's one of my favorite uh, interviews I've done. You know, we talked about his acting and all of that. But anyways, he uh, you know he he talked about that about everybody kind of doing their job and the importance of even 
the defensive backs might not be chasing down wide receivers like they did against USC and and whatnot, but that they have to they have to be sound in the run game, and that's what I was going to do. It's going to be cold, but uh, you know this defensive front, um, I think they they like that kind of challenge with uh, Ty Robinson, Nash Hotmaker, those those guys on the D line. I think they're um, they're ready for it. I think they, you know, one thing that. Um, might be lost and I just I felt I felt it immediately after the game was that okay they got this sixth win and they beat Wisconsin they got the trophy and all is well and I I immediately felt a switch of no 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 we've got one more game we want to go win yeah and so I I think that this is a challenge that they're embracing of course I mean last time for Ty Robinson to play Iowa and and Nash and some of those older guys that I just I think this is a challenge they're really embracing, and um, I think they want to they want to go out with a bang here, and I think stopping Iowa's run game is uh, would be a, a good way to do that. So when you take a look at the kind of the mood um, for this team, do you like the short week or do you wish they had another day of prep? How did how, kind of what was your feel? I I don't think it. I mean, I think it's all right. I think at this point. I've heard it a couple different times now. It's less about preparing for Iowa and more about doing what Nebraska does. You know, mm. I think they've they put together a couple different weeks and they've really built some momentum on the offensive side of the ball. And so it's less about, okay, what's their what is Iowa going to do defensively? It's more, hey, how are we going to execute? And, yeah, I, I just I kind of think that, hey, you got some momentum going. It, it is what it is. You know, I mean, this yeah. is going to happen every single year. This program knows that you're going to play on Friday and you're on prime time on NBC. And it, it's uh, you've got a, a lot of momentum going into this. And so I think for the most part, yeah, I mean, you always probably not like the short week. It's also kind of crazy with the Thanksgiving and all of that, but it's, it's what this program has dealt with every year. You know, it's, it's part of what, what they do is they play on Thanksgiving or the day after Thanksgiving, and so you manage it how you manage it. But I, I think they'll they, – they, I think they really – it was a big turning point. I, I've heard that now multiple times from players. That was huge. The, the pressure that's been relieved, just a, I think maybe a big turning point, what they were able to do against Wisconsin – and I think they've got a lot of confidence. I think, honestly, they probably – the sooner they can get out on the field, the better is uh, kind of the sense I feel. Nice. That's Jessica Cooney from the Husker Radio Network. Jessica, we appreciate it. As always, enjoy your trip and have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Jess. Happy Thanksgiving. See you on the flight, E.B. You got it. Before we send you out into the weekend, I wanted to tell you about my friends over at Midlands Family Urgent Care. They have a lot more to offer than what you might think from an urgent care facility. I've been going there for a few months now to help me out with my weight loss. After a consultation, they were able to prescribe me semaglutide. It's the same active ingredient as Ozempic, which I'm, heard, I'm sure you've heard plenty about. And now I'm down almost 30 pounds overall. Best part is I just don't think about food all the time anymore. You know me. I've been thinking about constant cravings and stuff all the time. It's just been a total game changer for me. If you need a little help losing some of that weight as well, make sure you make an appointment. MidlandsUrgentCare.com is where you do that. DB, have a great trip. Have a great Thanksgiving. And uh, we'll meet back here on Monday. Yeah, see you soon.